everyone and welcome back. So we are f at number, uh, I believe, episode 11 now. We're uh, moving on through things and uh, we're going to run the opening monologue again and then we will, uh, we will start the game. In the realm of Grimir, where the horizon disappears into the great unknown, fearless souls set forth upon the treacherous waters of the Serpent Seas. The raiders, marked by their unyielding spirit and thirst for glory, embark on a perilous quest to carve their names into the annals of history amid the shifting tides. But as they sail these unforgiving waters, they must tread with caution, for these seas are not merely a conduit to fame. They are a realm of choices, each one shaping the very weave of destiny. For every cresting wave, every hidden reef, the sea demands not only physical prowess, but a test of the heart. Bonds forged in the crucible of battle, the unswathing loyalty among shipmates, the unexpected alliances forged in the crucible of adversity, all of these are put to the ultimate trial upon the high seas. In the heart of this maritime odyssey lies the key to triumph, the crew, for it's not merely a matter of brute strength or skill, but the synergy of diverse talents and the unwavering unity. The raiders must stand at, as one, each member bringing their unique strengths to the fore. In a realm where danger is palpable as salt is on the air, where fortunes teach on the edge of an axe, every decision made, every path chosen has repercussions that ripple beyond the horizon. As they sail deeper into the heart of the unknown, the raiders come to understand their choices will mould not only the destinies, of themselves, but the fate of Grimir itself. So as the party are getting ready to embark on the next daring saga across the seas, they must remember that courage is not just the absence of fear, but the forging of bonds that withstand the storm's fury. In the realm of Grimir, where the seas whisper tales of ancient legends and mysteries, the raiders must navigate not only the treacherous waters, but also the uncharted depths of their own souls. All right, everyone. So we are back on the shoreline here. You guys have recently come up. You're beginning to start resting up here, if that makes sense. By the end of this long rest, you will have all become the level four that you guys have already sort of set up. You are reunited with your crewmates that have now brought their the other ship, the, your original ship, round and in line with the other the other two that were already on the, uh, uh, actually on this sort of semi dock that's all well, what's left of one on the edge of this sort of lava field that's going on. The two Lutan clan ships and your own are, um, yeah, all seem serviceable and usable still at this point. You are now in control of at least a couple of Orn banners that you know that you would be able to sail under. You also now have two Lutan banners as well that uh, uh, were actually with the current ships that are already on board but now you have to start thinking about resting the um, decisions um, thoughts of your progress going forward where you guys want to try and head next um, Rolf will be able to help you with some of this and there are more survivors here you obviously have brought up uh, a group of Orn with you that you've managed to rescue on your trip down through the lava tunnels you've brought those back you have also brought back captured Lutan, Lutan clan members you have uh, obviously the green dragonborn and a few of his men there's the three of them left that are now sort of being semi-guarded by the Orn uh, on this on this shoreline and you've got um yeah, possibly more people than you have room for in one ship now, but there are more ships. So it's going to be a case of deciding what's going on with the crews, which ones are coming with you guys, which ones are going to be, you're going to trust to sail on uh, separately. And yeah, you're going to have to work all of this out, along with dealing with all of the, shall we say, fallout of your events down in the uh, tunnels below where you have... Uh, Clearly, we've had Baldor and whatever was going on with uh, with him and the uh, 
strange phenomenons that, uh, as he went into the equivalent of the Avatar state, I'll give you that, um, <laughs> uh, as as that went on down down below, along with uh, others of you that um, may not realise it yet, but you have other things to deal with. But yeah, you are here, you're, you're tired, but you are all alive and you are reunited with your crew. Right? So I think first things first is, are there any things that... Uh, rejoin this little group that uh that would come up first I, i'll tell you the the first interaction um uh, probably slightly beyond your control blithe is your uh is your wolf making its way over to uh to city and uh yeah uh, going to get scritches almost instantly <laughs> uh that happens before even Harolf can sort of uh wave and welcome uh welcome you back as uh uh, as you do, and he sort of, uh, yeah, he just uh, literally uh, sort of nods at you all. And uh, well, <clears> now <throat> you seem to have uh, done quite well. How is everyone faring? Some of you look like shit. I feel fine. <laughs> he sort of not, he nods at you, and you know he, um, you, you two don't see eye to eye uh, anyway. On some, he doesn't. You're not sure whether he fully trusts you, um, but he definitely, uh, he definitely gives you a, a, a solid nod that, uh, that, that yes, you're still alive. <laughs> and the rest of you, how you doing? Nothing I'm fine. A long rest will fix. Well. We've managed to at least uh, make some sort of a camp. We've uh, been gathering uh, what little supplies we can, and uh, we've had a few survivors sort of make their way over. Uh, and it looks like you've managed to bring up a few, uh, even I recognised. And he sort of uh, he gives a look to the uh, uh, to Thonga, the uh, the woman that you uh, you found down in the uh, in the tower before, and he sort of uh, she sort of gives him a. Uh, uh, a look and a nod, and uh, and so I think she said something along the lines of, um, "Well, it looks like you're still alive, then, you old, you old goat." <laughs> uh, and uh, he sort of, um, yeah, just smiles a, a little bit at that, and uh, sort of uh, uh, says, "Good to see you too." And uh, yes, they seem to. There's definitely some history there of some description uh, as that's going on. The rest of your crew, your crew are still um, uh, lingering about as well. They, some of them have been off uh, gathering food and some supplies, um, along with some uh, some other strange characters that you uh, you don't recognise. Uh, there's a, a fair bit of that. But is there any uh, anything that uh, anyone particularly would be uh, up to now? They're at the point where, yeah, there's a moment of breathing and uh, there is some some mead being supplied around the. Uh, around the group as this is going on. Before I speak with you, Hrolf, might I walk among the people? Absolutely. No problem. We've got time. I just don't want to stay, these... stay here too long, but uh, the volcano seems to be uh, well, stable as it's going to be for now. Okay, so this is going to walk off, and uh, while whatever interaction is happening here, she's going to ritually cast uh, Detect Magic. Okay, no problem. No worries. You can be uh, doing a bit of that. Anyone else up to anything in the in these moments as uh, as this is all uh, going on? Uh, I suppose Baldor. How how what's he uh, feeling now as uh, dealing with the aftermath of whatever went on? In some ways, uh, how's he how's he so, doing? So while they were down there, um, uh, he knows Hoder got quite mad at him, and he does not know or. He, he doesn't have the faculties to fathom why. Um, <laughs> and he thought, oh, that was a strange interaction. Um, and because of that, he will do nothing with that until Hoder does something. Uh, so he will take some meat and take it over to the prisoners. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, you definitely see um, some of um, Thorngird's allies are are sort of looking over over some of them, and they're sort of uh, looking uh, looking on on uh, as as you're sort of making your way over. The Dragonborn seems to be uh, awake now and uh, is, is at least conscious. Um, he looks uh, pretty damn rough and badly burned from whatever went on, um, and sort of I would say fairly crestfallen with the situation he now finds himself. 
they have they have been bound. Uh, they're not uh, they're not free uh, to be moving around as this is all going on. But uh, yeah, what's uh, uh, what's Baldor doing? How are they bound? Hence, behind the back or in no, front? just in front for now. They're not uh, okay. It's just I'll, enough I'll, to make I'll, sure they're not. Yeah. In that case, I'll I'll hand them like the horn of meat that I bought in nowhere. I think. There's plenty. Um, of, there's plenty of horns around for for drink. Yeah. on that front at the moment. And yeah. I'll uh, hand it to him. Uh, here, I, I know this must have been a cup, tough couple of days uh, for you guys. And uh, yeah, he sort of looks quizzically at you, and uh, he says, um, "Thank you. I'm not sure uh... how." Did members of our clan get involved in all of this? What are you doing so far, far from um, our uh, our homeland? I, I wanted to say the city, but I do not remember. That's this, okay. This That's okay. <laughs> Lutan's uh, capital. I will go with that for a moment. Uh, he says, uh, "Well, uh, I remember. Uh, I remember the wizard coming to us on one on one occasion." And, um, to be honest, I don't know how or why, but I felt the need to help him do what he wanted to do. I didn't f understand exactly what it was, but I knew I had to come here with him, and I felt compelled. Uh, uh, it's hard to explain. I, I don't feel it anymore, and I don't understand why. I'll say magic, and I'll, like, spit on the ground. Uh... Actually, he, no, that might you, be a little you, bit... You, you, get, you do get the sense he's coming to the same, same that, conclusion. That might be a little bit too too hefty of a reaction. I'm not necessarily <laughs> against, against it. But that, that does sound like... Um, like, like the unjust use of uh, magical abilities. That... Uh, I've never... I've never liked magic, and wizards should never be trusted. But for some reason, I trusted him. I'm, I mean, not all wizards are bad, you know. Like Some of them can be quite nice. <sighs> I don't know. I think they're all playing a game. They're all tricksy. Anyway, I, I think I've been... I think I've been duped along with my men... <sighs> Yeah, at least we're alive. Maybe we can at least have someone figure things out for us enough that at least they may give us a trial that we might get a chance to talk, which is more than what we would have got before. Whatever went on with uh, what my men say with you. Uh, with me? You literally stopped him killing... Us, her killing us in the in the moments. You literally opened up the heavens and the skies parted for you, and lightning came to the ground. What? I'm, I'm pretty sure that wasn't me. I'm still not quite sure what happened there. I I saw it. <laughs> One of the ones behind it, sort of, like, <laughs> <laughs> sort of uh, perking up as it's on that. I, I saw you saw you lightning out of his ass. <laughs> you saw lightning out of his asshole. Yeah, it's right out of his dick too. <laughs> uh, uh, the polite version of that, yeah. <laughs> well, that last part is very true. But uh, <laughs> but honestly, I, I do not know what uh, happens. Maybe Luta came in and stopped me from dying and that was something along those lines. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what what happens to be honest uh, he sort of I'm looks very... at you he sort of looks at you and says so maybe you're one of the gods chosen then and he sort of eyes I, go I... a little a little wide at that in the in that moment and at that point like a, a little glimmer uh shows into the eyes maybe I am <laughs> <laughs> and he says well th thank you anyway uh, you yeah. We'll uh, we'll keep our heads down until we'll, I guess we f find the drift hole. We'll see if we can plead our case once we get there. I like if 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 it 
helps, I would be willing to explain what happened, or at least what I believe happened. Uh, I think our clan has lost enough already due to the actions of the the wizard, and I, I would hate to see more of us perish. Can I give you one piece of advice? Uh, is it buy better meat? <laughs> well, certainly, when if when that's possible, that will be definitely a, a good thing. If that's what's left in the ship's hold, that's uh, not a good sign. But no, it's um, just watch the Orn for us, okay? They um, they would have our blood pretty easily, I think. We won't provoke them, but I don't think there's if... gonna there's gonna take much for them to wanna create an accident if possible I would have you revel on our ships I don't know if we can get that done but I will do my best to plead your case if you can uh, that would be uh, an honorable thing to do and he sort of nods sort of uh yeah, sort of uh, thinking that yeah, maybe maybe he won't end up on an Orn ship, and or at least might be ending up on the ship that you that you guys are on. But they take okay. up space, so we shall see. <laughs> well, enjoy the meat shared among all of you. I don't have that much actually, um, but at, at, I hope it will bring you some peace and quiet. Okay, thank you. Uh, so as that's all going on, and uh, yeah, uh, Baldor is off doing his own thing. And is anyone else up to anything uh, dramatic as this is going on? Or um, is there a, a, a bit of drinking or? Uh, Hodor probably, he, he's not saying anything, not engaging with anyone. But he is constantly side-eyeing the conversation that um, Baldor's having with the right so every every so often there is a there is an eye to uh to to where he is at, actually at and, and yeah in. yeah fair enough fair enough and um so yeah i mean the uh the other things that will happen over time if there isn't anyone else up to anything in particular um the oh. Go ahead. Yeah, Router is there. Uh, um, oh, <clears throat> Router. Not Router. No, it's, it's, it's me. The person who's <laughs> never here. Um, <laughs> welcome back. Wait, welcome are you? Back. <laughs> are you new? Hi, I'm can you, Amy. Can you I'm introduce yourself to the stream, character. please? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, a Blaze Malkiel. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to take uh, a little bit of time to. Um, I said I was going to teach. Uh, the girl. That's right, City. That's a... uh, to ride uh, Iron. Oh wow! Remember okay. I said I was going to do that uh, eight, uh, quite a while ago in the, in the inn. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Iron's got a big enough to for a small child to ride, so uh, I said I would uh, uh, if she showed interest. One hundred percent. You would be absolutely. Uh, that would be absolutely making her day uh, as, the, uh, as this is going on. And um, yeah, she would be. Uh, she would be very, very ha happy to uh, to uh, see. So, uh, with a bit of training on that front, shall we? Uh, shall we get her to do an animal handling check and see how uh, how how well she's she's learning from you? I'm going to say you're giving an assistance as uh, for this role cool. to see how well uh, how well that starts to play out with a. A little bit of practice in. Let's uh, let's see uh, on that one. Uh, so uh, yeah, so, so with some assistance, she rolls a nine. So uh, it's <laughs> early, early, early days of uh, of, of this, but um, um, yeah, she's in happy in her element, uh, trying to trying to work this out. Although it is, yeah, it is very early days. She's not a competent rider, um, but okay. it, it does remind you of seeing other um, younglings. Back in uh, back in the original camps of uh, uh, of the war back in the day, and how uh, how they would learn in similar fashions, but it does bring back some of those memories. You may have been isolated for many years, but you do remember the early years of uh, of what it was like to be uh, to be a member of your clan like that. 
uh, don't feel uh, feel sad that you could, can't get it on the first time. It, Iron's still very small as well, and so are you. So you it's know, it's tricky. It's very tricky. Uh, it took me a little while as well, and my uh, my brother gave me a bit of a hard time, <laughs> but um, I'll you know. Irene has obviously formed a good bond with you, and it would be a shame for that that bond not to be uh, explored by yourself. See if you if you excel, then perhaps we can uh, look to get uh, you a little a wolf of your own. Man. <laughs> you see her eyes are going wide at the possibility um, as that's going on. Uh, although you do actually think your <laughs> your one is like uh, no, no, she's mine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, you were going to get very big <laughs> soon, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but and but sort of t- taking more scratches. But yeah, they're bonding very, uh, very, very well as uh, uh, as that's all uh, sort of happening. And, and Blythe, Blythe sees this as it, he's not. Uh... He tries to sort of encourage it as well because um, he and Iron are very isolated, and it's basically only Blythe and uh, Iron now. And he feels more like she could do with the company more than he could, so he's not very good company. And uh, so yeah, he's he's quite happy to see them, you know, form in this bond. Fair enough. Nice. So yeah, I think a little bit of um, a little bit of time will um, start to pass. Then um, obviously, well, James, I did um, coming back. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was about to say um, I'm ritually casting detect magic, mm-hmm. um, and what Zisa wants to do is she wants to walk among the people so that her sphere of 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 magic catches everyone to see if anybody is influenced the way that we've seen before. Does anybody have those tendrils? Does anybody have those thorns in their neck? Anything like that. She wants to see, especially the Lutan, who were the aggressors in this and who now everybody has a wary eye on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think you slowly wander through the uh, through the camp um, with, without, any, without any issue. Um, obviously, barring sort of magical items on on your on the crew and things that you're already you're already aware of, the um, the Dragonborn and his group don't don't ping in in any way uh, like you would kind of expect. Uh, so that you you do feel comfortable that they're not they're not under the same sort of um, effect, shall we say, as uh, uh, as others. Uh, you do get close to Egel and you do see her uh, aura giving off uh, um, some sort of divine. Uh, magic kind of thing, but you're you've been aware of that from from previous as well. Yeah, going through. The only time that something pings that is in, in odd in any way, shape, or, t- or is odd to you is when you get to Hodor. There is, uh, oh. yeah, something going on with with him. Don't look around, Jess. You know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I I do a lap, and Zisa did that thing where she breathes out and she pushes out this the sphere around her and she does a lap she studies the lutan um and she's not talking to anybody mm. even if they're like looking at her or anything like that she walks up and looks directly at the group of lutan without like speaking to them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just uh then walks off when she's satisfied and as she comes back to tell um Harolf what's going on um her gaze suddenly slowly shifts to hodor and Hold yeah, on. you can definitely yeah you can definitely see uh, some sort of um a, a ping coming from something in his sort of like hip region on his side. What is that? Your hip? Is that my hip? Sorry. Um. So <laughs> yeah, you 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 have no idea what Zeus is talking about as uh, as this is all going on. Uh, you feel pain. Uh, you've certainly been battered and bruised from whatever's gone on in over the last period. Um, but yeah, you're not sure what she's referring to in the moment. I point to the space and I say, "There." It's one of the right. it's one of the cuts. It's uh, some something where you've been hit. Um, yeah, you know your sort of bag and your, your satchel bit that you've had has uh, sort of been 
was been pressed up against you there, but you seem to have, uh, yeah, you've taken a nasty hit, and yeah, it's painful. As as is everything else. Scratch, I guess. Let me see it. You see your blood sugars. <laughs> A scratch, I guess. <laughs> My blood sugar's are low. <laughs> My blood sugar's are low. <laughs> he pulls out a digestive and he starts eating. <laughs> yeah, it can all be healed with the digestive biscuit. Of course. Uh, Hodo, yeah, do you, do you uh, acquiesce to her sort of like, may she take a look? I don't think anyone uh, touching him, he doesn't. He doesn't like people touching him very much. Well, then you don't have to. Yeah, what so, you have to do, what Hoda would do in this one. Yeah, he'll, he'll go. I can look at it myself uh, later. Thank you. I don't really want to be touched right now. What um, what type of magic is this giving off, James? Is this the same magic as uh, the Lutan were under? Yeah, yeah. You're seeing something similar. Small, but similar. No. You will show us now. Or you will be restrained. I'm just gonna get up and just be like, oh, "It's just a scratch. I don't see what your problem is. Just leave me alone. I've had a bad enough day as it is." And he starts like just walking away, like a like a teenager, essentially. Not Harolf. <laughs> Hodor is showing the same magics that have uh, influenced the Lutan. What? He and... needs to be restrained now. Kill him. Oh. <laughs> what? Are you... <laughs> Hodor is just like, "What are you talking about? My mind is totally my own." I have nothing. I don't like that wizard. I don't want to be working for him. Yeah, it's just like, what's going on? What's going on? And and uh, yeah, he comes walking over. He's not grabbing you or trying to restrain you right in the moment. Hodor. Hodor is wounding. So. Something about the wound has something in common with the influence that took over the Lutan. And I suspect the war. Will you let us have take a look, Hodor? It sounds like something's going on. She's usually pretty good at figuring out odd magics and that kind of thing. She's kind of good at that. Hodor's eyes are probably like darting around at everyone because I'm sure this has caused a bit of stir. Yeah, there's definitely the a, there's certainly like <laughs> people he's, like looking around. He's not good at being the center of attention, and mm. especially oh, most being eyes. Most eyes yeah. are on you. Yeah, yeah. he's. Kind of backing away from everyone being like, I'm uh, really not comfortable with this right now. Can you just give me a few minutes? And just, I'm not feeling so good. And he just starts walking away because this is not, he can't be doing with this. He can't be dealing with this level of attention, this worry, this panic. Uh, he's already sensitive from before. What's going on? Yeah. Emotionally, not in a good state. I have good. walked among the crew and the survivors. Hodor is the only being here that is giving off the same magical essence that the Lutan were before. He could be a threat. Maybe he could be a eye. seed planted. Hodor should not be left alone. I'll keep an eye on him. And uh, yeah, Hodor, as you're sort of wandering off, uh, Harolf is kind of following you as uh, uh, as this is uh, as this is going on. So yeah, it's sort of a, you. You are sort of wandering off into the space uh, f further on, and uh, he sort of uh, when you're far enough away, he sort of says, "You, you're gonna stop for a more." Just, it's just too much at once. I just, it's overwhelmed. It's not that I don't trust or I don't want to make sure that I'm okay. I just, it's just uh, there it was too oh. much at once. Looking and everything with Boulder is too much. I get it. I only heard a little bit about what's gone on with your brother, and that's weird. But um, Zisa is very direct, and uh, she does take a lot of getting used to. I'll definitely give you that. But she's not usually wrong or liar. You may need to have a have a look and let's see what's going on there. We don't have to do it with everybody. It's something we need to at least figure out if you're okay. I, I agree, and I'm happy for her to do it. I just need a few minutes before. No worries. Get a bit too much. 
and he sort of um, he, he sort of sits and takes a, a little bit of mead and he he offers you a little piece as well see, seeing if you will take it and just sit and calm down he shakes his head I don't blame you it's strong it's stuff that it always messes with people if you don't care and it works for me but take the time you need I'm here we'll work through it once you're once you're ready and if you need to talk, well, I promised your family I'd at least keep an eye on you. Hoda's going to take about ten minutes of just quiet, just to himself, breathing. And he says, I'll, um, I'll call her over in a second. Um, just the thing that's happened with my brother. I admit I overreacted just a bit, but, uh, you know, uh, sibling rivalries uh, make you react a bit differently. No I uh, won't be able to uh, say this to his face, but uh, I understand the whole weird powers that you don't understand thing kind of being there and how overwhelming and upsetting it can be. Uh, he won't accept help from me, nor am I probably willing to give it to him openly but if you could keep an eye out on him for me and if things get too bad you be there for him where I can't be maybe you're more alike than you realise <laughs> funny things like that but family are a strange bunch <laughs> I that's true. <laughs> well, uh, let's, uh, let's call her over then. Okay. Give me more. And he sort of, uh, yeah, he sort of, uh, he sees you calming down and, um, yeah, taking the moment. Uh, so Zisa, uh, uh, a few more minutes pass before, um, uh, Harolf comes, comes back and sort of says, he's ready to take a look. And he sort of puts a hand on your shoulder and he says, You don't need to stop doing what you're doing. Thank you. I just wish you weren't always so direct. But I know it's what you are. Oh, I think you muted, Conrad. Zisa doesn't say anything because she's muted. No. <laughs> uh, Zisa will nod slowly. But say, direct saves time, time we don't have. We must speak to the Volve. And after I am done with Hoder, I must speak with you. We also need to figure out what our next steps are going to be. We need to work out what's the next best thing. But I'm starting to think it might be we need to get to the Volve quicker than I thought. We have a banner, I at least. I agree. But we'll talk as a group once... You're done. So Zisa makes her way over directly to Hoder and says, I'm told you're now ready to cooperate. Yeah. I was always willing. It's just not in that exact moment. Sometimes you need to process things before you're comfortable with doing them. As you say, show me your wound. Uh, he'll pull back some robes and show his hip, bony ass hip. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, yes, yeah, definitely very bony, but there is, um, uh, yeah, a bad graze slash cut on the side of uh, of Hodor there. Um, yeah, it certainly needs uh, healing with time. Um, uh, you can make a medicine check, Zisa, and see uh, see what you can figure out. Double twelves. Uh, it is. It takes a little bit, of it, bit, but there is definitely something embedded in the in the wound. Uh, there's certain, certainly something there. You can definitely see it more clearly with uh, with your detect magic than anything. But there is, yeah, something that has been lodged into his uh, into his side. It's very, very small. Whatever it is, like a Lisa has something. 
are, are you sitting for this or standing or what's going on, Hoder? What position are you in? Um, probably because of how the hit works, I'd probably be standing because the wound would probably not be very accessible sitting. Zisa has um, squatted and she is like uncomfortably close to your wound, just staring at it. And she turns her head slightly to the side and says, There was something inside your wound. If left untreated, this could possibly lead to what we've seen with the Lutan and the Wa. We should remove it. As long as you do it safely, go ahead. I believe that I would be less suited to do this than others. And she'll stand and she'll say, Sidi, I need you. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the the little one will uh, will eventually pull herself away from the uh, uh, from the uh, wolf and make her way over. Um, my my head cannon for why she was failing at her animal checks was every time she put her legs over the wolf to ride on it, it just flopped and rolled over on its belly for belly rubs. <laughs> there, there was too many too many scratches involved on that one. That is too cute. Yes. Um, so she comes running over and she's like, "Hi." You have small hands, and do we know she can heal people? Like, has the, I, I keep I keep forgetting if we know that in character or not. I, I no, I don't think it's happened. Think, yet. I don't think it's happened in that respect. I'm trying to think how canon wise you would. But. Yeah, I don't think I don't think so. So, um, just she'll just say, <laughs> "Go with the time." You have the on. smallest hands of all of us here. Mm -hmm. I need you to reach inside of Hoder's wound and pull something out, but I need it to be intact, and you need to make sure that you are not cut by it. Can you do this? Um, she looks at you quizzically and determined. Make a persuasion check. See how you're going to do. Uh, 16. That's fine. <laughs> uh, fair enough on that one. And she says, uh, that's... Uh, uh, inside, in with, with with all the blood and stuff. Yes. And 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 you want me to do this? And she sort of looks at Hodor as sort of like she I, seems shaky. <laughs> Let's put it that way right now. I trust you, and I think you could do a marvelous job. And to be honest. I'm less bony than gooey, so it's not going to be discussed, but too bad in there. And, uh, yeah, you can see she's very, very nervous about uh, about giving this a go. But, uh, yeah, if you uh, if you guys uh, do sort of push, she will uh, she will come round and uh, and sort of self set herself up for it. She expects she to sort of lay down Hodor and uh, um, sort of give, give her the, the best opportunity for, for trying to, to figure that out. Is there anything that's being done in these moments to try and help this situation that she's going to attempt? Um, Zisa is going to put her hands on either side of Hodor's wound and just say, you will need to stay still, but this will be painful. And Zisa is going to pull the wound apart even more so that Sidi can get her hand in there. Um, she will point out directly to the item that needs to be pulled out. Okay, so Hodor, we're going to need a constitution um, saving throw from you, I think, as, uh, as this is going to be yeah, going on. Yeah, Hodor would have like seen Zisa's hands going towards his wound and just picked up a stick off the ground to put in his mouth <laughs> so he doesn't like scream, scream out scream in out. Pain. a bone. <laughs> I thought you would uh, pull out my... a bone from somewhere. I do have a, a femur lying around, actually. <laughs> lying you. around. <laughs> it's on my list. Um, In your pack of teeth. Uh, save or yeah. Yeah, just a constitution save. Yeah, in this case, let's see how uh, how how he's um. Uh, it's oh. really good or really bad. <laughs> it's the really bad uh, on that one. Um, the even with um with what's going on with uh, uh with with the bo uh, the bone in the mouth and all of this the horrendous screams that start coming from him uh, clearly everyone that's around the fire and things like that will be picking up 
on the uh, on this. Uh, he, yeah, Baldor, even you're picking up that he's just literally, uh, yeah, just can't stop the pain of uh, what's going on. Uh, shaky hands. Uh, uh, Sadi will be going in with assistance. Let's see how she's going to do with a uh, a medicine check here, and we're going to see on that one. And um, give me two seconds. Ma -da -da -da. Medicine. There we go. Let's see how. And she we'll say that uh, Zisa is also using prestidigitation to keep the uh, blood away from the spot where she wants the D to reach her hand into, like giving her the clearest view of what she needs to do. Absolutely. I mean, I mean you're like definitely you've, 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 you've definitely made this uh, <laughs> uh, as an as an assist, if that makes sense, uh, on that one. Turning a five into a thirteen as uh, her little hands uh, uh, eventually. Uh, still shaking a bit, but she does pull out the tiniest of tiny little uh, thorns, little me metallic thorn from uh, from Hodor's side, and um, uh, she sort of like yeah, f you know, cov a bit covered in blood as uh, around around her hands as she uh, she does, and all the screams that's been going on. She's been uh, yeah, been, been shaking. She sort of holds it up, uh, yeah, sort of semi triumphant as. Uh, as that's going on, with just um, yeah, the the blood covering uh, her hands on on both sides, um, she and um, seems okay with what's going on. Yeah. So now, it, is Hoder ex like exuding that influence anymore, or is it was it just this thing? I think I think it's just that little thing, and now it's not okay. connected to Hoder. You even see that darling uh, in the moments as uh, uh, as that's all uh, all going on. Okay, so Zisa will take her finger and uh, and and thumb and, and take the the thorn and take it from uh, City. She'll absentmindedly use prestidigitation to um, clean off her hands and just say, "You've done well." Thank you. You could possibly be a healer with some training. She sort of and yeah, then, seems interested in that. <laughs> yeah, and then looks down, looks down at Hodor and says, "You are no longer giving off the influence. This may have saved your life." And then she'll just turn and walk away. Hodor <laughs> <laughs> just is heavy breathing, uh, thumb up in the air, not looking at her, just thumb up in the air, just like. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rolf uh, sort of puts a hand on your shoulder and sort of uh, just says to you, "Hold on, that one's thing." I know that was tough, but well done. I was actually walking to Harolf, ah. so I didn't know he wasn't there. So basically, I just I just show him the oh, what I pulled from Hoder and says, "Anyone who was under the influence that I saw gave off the same aura as what this was doing to Hoder." Do you, uh, do you think you know what it is? Or? Do you want me to roll anything, James? Arcana or something? Um, no, I mean, you guys have... Nature? You, you know, no, you guys have come across some of this already. You know um, from your previous sort of bits down in the lava tunnels and what you've seen of some of the wizard stuff, uh, that okay. you know that there was the... In his case, there were strange wooden metallic vines sort of wrapped around almost all of his... Uh, uh, unseen parts of his body if that makes sense almost like puppeting him uh, so you definitely know that this uh well you know this is probably ironwood you know that this is to do with the uh uh the witches and the witch king uh it, this, this sort of the main the main threads but again they're all legends and things like that but ironwood is a known thing if that makes sense this is ironwood the wizard that we battled and defeated and i nod to the body that we still have he was heavily influenced by this it wrapped around his very bones and it would seem that the others that we fought were influenced uh, albeit in a lesser way in, in the same manner possibly left in hoder it might have rooted and grown and then he would be the same as them this is news. This is big, isn't it? If many are controlled like this, then uh, maybe that's why. Maybe that's what we were, we've been actually been sent to find out for the Volve. Then 
is how far this extends, or at least bring back knowledge of it, I guess. It All the like more reason to find born. them. They're just legend normally, but... Ragnarok is coming, we know that. We've seen... That's coming. Are they... And all of it, or are they part of it? We'll, we'll find out, I guess. Ragnarok, the return of the Jotun, Ironwood. It's not all coincidence. Seems, I don't believe in that. Seems too much to be coincidence. We will need to find the Volve, and quickly. Yeah, we got to get find the Drift Hall. That's definitely uh, that's definitely true. Zisa will hand the Ironwood Shard back to Hoder. And just say, if you would keep this safe. Yep, I can do that. I kind of rips off, like, a bit of the fabric of his robe that's already been destroyed by this thing and wraps it up in there so it doesn't accidentally stab him again. <laughs> um, so, Ironwood Thorn, I have that. Um, whilst those two were talking, mm -hmm. um... Hoda would have turned his attention to the little one and would have taken her hands and said, um, said, you saved me. Thank you very much. You did a big thing. You should be really proud of yourself. Um, I was nervous, I but I, th I, I don't know, but I knew I could do it. You can do so much more with that kind of mentality. Um, I want to show my thanks. I don't, do this normally it's not my kind of thing but uh i see if i still got it in me and he's gonna crack his hand and he's gonna sort of run his fingers through her hair and as it as it pulls through small little petunias just dance through her hair because petunias are a flower that and good health and that's kind of what she represents to him now so he she just he just makes it so she has these beautiful little flowers in her hair yeah, as I mean, a, she a, goes. She she loves the, the, the she goes wide eyed at the at the at the magic, and uh, she does say, uh, "Your magics are quite quite beautiful." Not normally, my forte is the beautiful, but uh, I can do it on special occasions like this. Hmm. But yeah, you see, you, yeah, she's <laughs> she's definitely feeling uh, very pleased with herself, and that. Um, uh, that she now has this uh, this adornment going on. Uh, so yes, that's definitely uh, all good. I think with a bit of time, then um, I'm assuming you guys return, and uh, uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, mead and drinking is going on. Is anyone else up to anything? Uh, we've not heard from Rauda much, or uh, uh, we've had a little bit from Blythe, but uh, and Frida, uh, <laughs> what about uh, what about yourselves? Is there anything you would be up to? Uh, there's plenty of other new people around and things like that. Uh, as well, uh, would then would they, would you guys be up to anything uh, over and above what's been uh, currently going on? Um, Rauda is still quite a mess. Um, she like half of her face is melted and uh, skin is still peeling off. Like she looks really rough after going down in that fight. But um, if you look closely, you can actually see her healing at quite an accelerated rate. Um, and she just seems to be sat there drinking through it. Like, it doesn't look like a fun process, but you can tell it's something that she's clearly used to. Um, yeah, I think I, I think Wolverine esque. Uh, yeah, I don't think many are picking up on it, but I do think, um, I think, um, uh, Thonga probably would be sort of eyeing you every so often and just, uh, is realizing that that is going, uh, going on and uh, uh sort of uh does it uh, at one point sort of make her way over to you and uh, she sort of says um uh that's a neat trick being able to uh survive all of that fire and uh you look like you're already uh already healing very good oh, this it's just a scratch as like half of her face is. yeah a, she, she, she goes wide-eyed at that I'll be fine. In the morning, I'll be all good. Wish I had that trick. No, you don't. 
And she sort of says, yeah. She sort of nods at that, sort of taking it in for a moment. It's like, yeah, you might have to tell me how you gained something like that at some point. Or does that take a bit more mead than, uh, than you currently had? It's a long story. Long, long story. Oh. Maybe if I'm cruel, maybe there'll be time. And she sort of like, nods and sort of tips a tips a drink towards you, the and sort of uh, yeah clinks it for a moment, and then uh, yeah she'll go and wander and uh, wander and sit and uh, carry on. Uh, what about Frida in all of this? Is how she been getting on? Frida is also severely messed up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she was on three HP by the end of that. Um, it's gone back up to four now, so I can't remember. Um, she would ask, um, uh, uh, Harolf at some point, mm. f- uh, if, um, she could have the armor and the sword that we found. Um, and then she would just sort of be sitting by the fire, drinking ale and sort of just in deep thought, looking at the, uh, the knife that she has uh, with her family insignia and just, just resting after an absolutely brutal <laughs> um brutal I, yeah, couple of sort of said, I only heard little bits of what went on down there but um you know you always hold your own and um you're absolutely right there's no one else that I would rather the use use that for the clan and for the for the good of uh, of this of this of this voyage it's well, not going to get easier you know I think uh, Thonia blessed me on this day. I, we, we are extremely lucky that we made it out alive. If I'm going to be honest, we've we've been in a lot of fights, even me and you together. But that was not not something that I've ever witnessed before. No. I can feel uh, things are. Uh... Are moving in a in a direction now. We'll have a discussion as a group in the morning as what to will what we'll get up to. But um, if Ragnarok is on the way, well, yeah, things aren't going to improve. They aren't going to get easier. I know that much. It's like the very earth is fighting us now. Let's let's hope the gods see upon us that. We can either stop it or at least prevent as much that we can in our time on this this planet. I think they're on our side. At least <laughs> most of the good ones, anyway. We'll see. And he sort of yeah, he nods and sort of uh, carry on, carries on moving around. Um, um, I would also ask hmm? one of the Orn people, maybe the person that we saved. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you definitely had a, the you've had a few. Um, about the owl symbol and the the gemstone in it. See if she knows anything about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. She would say, um, "It's one of the old watcher swords. It's not been used in a long time. Um, I, you found it down there, you say, in 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 amongst all our uh, our gear." Uh, yes, it's, uh, same with this armor. I hope you don't mind me using it. It's, it's um, it feels extremely well balanced. Not, not that anything that Orn makes is not. I'm always very happy with the craftsmanship of this of this clan. We do good work, but no, I don't have any problem with you uh, having all of this. It's um, it should be put to the good use and yeah you lot are the reason that we are going to be getting on a ship and getting out of here there aren't many of us left we'll have to go and see how many are left in in the drift hall and other places but um yeah i think as long as i've got this and i can give this to the to the clan members we're all right and she sort of pulls out sort of a uh, it's got a, a very similar owl um, emblem to it, but it's uh, it's more of a sort of a statuette thing, and um, mm. it's more of a this is more of a clan symbol for uh, yeah. for the leaders. And as long as we have this, um, 
Yeah, the right to uh, clan succession won't be a problem. So, yeah, you've at least let us been able to keep that and our lives. That's worth something. No, I think you're. I think that's in the right place. Thank you. Anyway, mm. uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go lie down now. Of course. And yeah, yeah, she will uh, nod and uh, and do that. Uh, meanwhile, then I guess uh, Baldor, what, uh, you've had him wandering around, Seb. Uh, what's what's he been? Oh up to? yeah, I just wanted to get away from the the main group here. I would say that during um, let's say Hoder's operation, uh, he would have looked on from a distance, and like as soon as like he. His thumb went up. It's like, okay, I don't need to pay attention to this anymore. And he, he would have <laughs> diverted his attention to others. He might have, like, wandered around, talked to um, Bjord and Bloki over here. Uh, or some of the other... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely... Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bloki would definitely be singing uh, singing some songs and bits and bobs to try and uh, increase morale uh, as that's going on. Uh, uh, Fjord would be uh, probably playing with some sort of small knife and uh, yeah, twiddling it around and doing bits near the fire and... Uh, uh, the usual kind of uh, kind of things that she uh, that she gets up to as uh, as you want. Yeah, around. plant them seeds. I love it. <laughs> ah, I love you Wait, planting our seeds for our backup characters. <laughs> so so he's doing the tr the traditional guy thing, playing the guitar, trying to serenade her. Is oh, that what's happening? He's, he's sort of uh, it's he's, he's sort so. of side eyeing her. He's not doing it directly, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, there. <laughs> there are probably hints of uh, of some of that. Although <laughs> you, you're pretty sure she's probably oblivious to most of what's going on there. Is he playing Wonderwall? <laughs> the, <laughs> equivalent, the equivalent <laughs> of uh, yeah, a Viking Wonderwall is uh, <laughs> is going on in the in the background. Um, I will say, Baldur, as you as you have been wandering around, you, your token you have ended up next to this little guy, uh, oh. which is Ooh. a very strange little character. Uh, that's certainly uh, certainly true. Where did we pick this right. guy up? Uh, on the that potato one. guy. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, uh, you you recognise that it's what he what he is, Baldor. He is some sort of a halfling sized wicker person. So uh, yeah, basically a um, a being made of wood. You've run into a couple of these you. now, um, but they are they are very rare. Um, but yeah, he's just a tiny little guy uh, in, in sort of like not wizard robes, but in long sort of yeah, yeah sort, of, sort of unmarked robes, uh, and uh, he seems to be have his missing uh, missing sort of one one arm, and he sort of uh, he looks up to you and says, uh, "Hi." You can speak. Wow. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can definitely speak. And uh, you're very rude, aren't you? I, I I, am very sorry. I didn't mean to. I Okay, this is going to come off as mean. I Again, I do not mean You've to. not run into many wicker, have you? I... No, not really. Where did we pick you up again? Oh, no, because no. I, yeah, yeah I, I, I made my own way up here when... Uh, when I realized that uh, the people from my visions were turning up. So that was good. It's nice to finally see faces that I've uh, <laughs> seen in dreams before finally turn up in Ria, in, in this place. I thought I was uh, running out of time. What with the volcano and all. And the ash and the fire. Yeah, I'm not good I, with the I fire. Can, I can imagine that is dangerous for you. Yeah, okay. you have no idea. I, 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 I don't mean to say you people, but you people. <laughs> I hope that doesn't sound insensitive. Sure. <laughs> he, he sort of, uh, he says on that one anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah, my name's Frine. Uh, nice to finally properly meet you then. Uh, so you're the... Um... That guy, yeah? Uh... Um, I mean, not not really. If you want, like, people to shoot elemental magics, you might actually be better off with my friend Zisa. Oh yeah, so yeah, so the sort of uh, uh, the the wizardy one. How do you know about that? No, uh, I, I am. <laughs> I am. 
I am kidding, of course. Um, no, I did do something like that down there, but I I don't quite know what it means. Not yet, anyway. And um, yeah, he sort of uh, looks you dead, dead in the eyes and just says, I think you're special. At least from what I've seen. You're going to be doing more of that. And um, like... Parents used to tell me that all the time, and I don't think it was meant in a good way. <laughs> but thank you, thank you, I think. Well, it's okay now. I'm, I finally found you all. That's a really good sign. It means that we're going to be getting off this rock soon, and I'm, uh, I'm sick of the fire. You look kind of magical, if that makes sense. I think. Well, I guess I am in what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm I, basically I think, a tree. <laughs> I do think Caesar would like to talk to you at some point. Maybe. We do not come across many people like you. I don't think there are many left. Not after what I've seen. Um, well, thank you, and, well, if you have anything more to, what, what are your visions about, by the way, because I, I don't know if that's rude or intrusive to ask, but that, like, we, we've met a couple of people that have said, like, things about destiny and stuff, and uh, I don't know. Maybe. Well, you guys were the last dreams I had before everything stopped. And it's been dark for a while now, but um. What happened in those dreams? Those I was dreams. with more of my kind. We were traveling somewhere as a group. We all, we were all working together towards something, you know? We needed to get somewhere, somewhere important, but I, it feels like it's been taken from me. I know we had, I know we had gems and we, there was some sort of a magical spear of some sort, but and then lightning, like what I saw with you. And then darkness. I've only seen snippets, and now they're dark. I miss the dreams. Well, I am going to show a rare sign of, like, self-awareness right here but I am not smart enough to interpret this dream I do not know what it means it sounds great I think or maybe terrible I'm not sure which of the two but I think like some of my companions might be better suited to this Again, like like Caesar, she's very good with dreams, apparently. Well, I, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. That's the important thing. We'll figure out the rest. And I'll I'll like look over his, her, and and like look at like the the tiefling goat person, mm. and I'll I'll say, you had bad dreams, didn't you? Yeah, not like those, but I definitely had. Dreams of the dead and ships made of toenails. Dark, pretty dark stuff. They don't sound the same. Sound delightful, though. <laughs> I mean, that does sound positively horrifying. But. You have no idea. Uh, 
Zisa, I need you over here. <laughs> Zisa has been staring at the body of the wizard whenever she wasn't talking to anyone. Mm-hmm. So you just see her looking at this dead body. Uh, but then when you say that, she um, stands up, spins around, and will walk directly uh, to you. Yes. Uh, little wooden person. Uh, that is a wicker. About- Yes, dreams about us. You've uh, dreamt of us. I have yes, and you're seen some of you. Yes, uh, my name is Prine, and sort of it re- reiterates very similar, similar things about uh, having visions of you, gr- your group, uh, having meeting you here uh, was certainly some of it. And then, yeah, have you seen about things. things to be? This was to be. I'm past not this. Sure about... What comes next? I know I've seen myself on a ship. I've seen bodies with life um, growing from them. I've seen an island where There is nothing but fog and green and I've seen eyes, white eyes, and a and a volcano erupting with them in a hellscape. I've seen you all fighting against giants. Things I don't even fully understand. But I know you're important. You should accompany us to talk to the Volve. Tell them what you've seen. They're wise. They may be able to learn more from your insights than we are possible of doing. I think I am supposed to go with you. And he sort of nods uh, at all of that. That's absolutely uh, a thing, as a, as you are all uh, as they're all there. Is there anything else before you guys take your long rest, <laughs> and uh, we take go to break in a moment? Uh, you see that Zisa came over, and she's actually wearing the gauntlets mm. that the wizard had on. And as Router walks up, she will say, "Router." May I see your weapon? Oh, uh, sure. It's over there somewhere. Come is it? Uh, wherever I guess you point. I thought you had it on you. Um, Zisa will walk up to your great axe. I'm guessing because you have your great axe. Yeah. And she will pick it up one handed, <laughs> spin it around effortlessly, and hold it out. And say, the wizard was wearing these gauntlets. They imbue great strength. Could you make use of these? Or possibly Frida, you. I don't know. What do they do? They're gauntlets of ogre strength. I don't know what they do. They give you a 19 strength. I have a 20 strength. Okay, well then what about the barbarian? The barbarian is good for that too. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Make the druid dench. Blind. So, <laughs> so uh, as as I spin the as I spin the uh, great axe around, I look at Blythe and I say, "You look like you could be weaker. Could you use these?" I have an eighteen strength. What the fuck, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah, remember my super. I had like fucking is... everything. <laughs> so, so that's this, why this I, party that's why I took got strength speak. covered, but they just don't have anything persuasive. Oh, I got, I got an eighty. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have also. a plus two to persuasion. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have a plus two persuasion too. Thank you very much. Oh no, I have a can plus we, four. Sorry. Can we give them the puppy? Sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry. I've got a sixteen strength. Oh. So I was right. You are weaker. Um, Weak. Uh, I, yeah, I've got a plus three strength. 
Um, I, I don't particularly need to be any stronger. I'm more about finesse than brute strength. Maybe, uh, maybe Hodor, considering Hodor has, it's very frail. Or maybe Give yourself. It to the child. <laughs> You're not here. <laughs> Do you Before wish to I ask Coder, I know Balder, you sometimes are closer in combat. Could you make use of these? I, I mean, I'm, I, I describe it. I'm, pre, I'm plenty strong already. I don't. Know <laughs> Nobody it. wants your amazing <laughs> gloves. I, don't know if I would get my <laughs> shoes out of them. Uh, out of oh character, I have 18 strength, so I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, nobody, n- nobody who could use these needs these. No. Okay. No, I'm next strength. My strength is nice. Give them, give them to the puppies. I mean, keep them. A strong wizard is fun. Just give them to strong, the yeah. child. Strong they wizard. About, they won't feel guilty about bringing the child for healing. No, don't give the like child. Dead. <laughs> get the child super strength. Yeah, she might need to ride the dog. She's carrying it above her head. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty awesome. But yeah, <laughs> so uh, I will uh, put the axe down, and uh, I, I will um, go to Hoder uh, after nobody wants them. She seems completely unperturbed, by the way, uh, that nobody wants these, um, and we'll just say. Hodo the wizard, who we fell, had these gauntlets. They bestow great strength, and it would seem the combatants in our party feel that they do not require them. You and I could possibly make use of them. I don't see a reason for me to have them, but I do know that sometimes you like to attack with your spear. Would you like these? Um. I could. Uh, sure. Why not? God, you're going to be as strong as your brother. If this oh. does sway you, in my estimation, this would Stronger. make you stronger than Boulder. <laughs> There's a glint. There's a slight glint in the eye. He's going to take the magic bit. I'll take the strong bit. <laughs> um. Well, uh, I do think it'll be good for the for the group. Um, kind of even the playing field with the strength. And yeah, yeah. I'll take it. As you sometimes fall back on your spear, I do believe you would get more use out of these than me. So I, I take off the uh, gauntlets of orc strength and I hand them to you and ta-da, after you have uh, attuned to them, you will have 19 strength. <laughs> nice! Uh, you just suddenly sprout muscles. <laughs> <laughs> you won't really see him. I refuse for them to be seen. <laughs> Fair enough. How do I, how do I get those? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do that during the uh, quickly okay. during the break. We can get the, put it on the D&D and you'll be on for you. Um, but yeah, I think uh, if if there's nothing else before you guys would take your long rest, then I think we, uh, we can uh, literally go to break here and uh, go grab some drinks and then uh, come back and deal with what the next part is. All right, everyone, welcome back then. So, uh, yeah, we've managed to go off and get drinks. So what we, where we begin back here is that uh, congratulations, everybody is officially level four. You rest overnight. Uh, you manage to uh, relax as you need and, uh, yeah, regain the health. Uh, the volcano does not re-explode overnight, uh, killing you all in your sleeps. So you're all, uh, you're, you, you make it through to the next, uh, to the next morning. And um, yeah, it's uh, around early morning with uh, with breakfast that Harolf will uh, uh, start sort of calling you all over for uh, time for a uh, for a meeting to figure out the uh, the next steps uh, as this is going on. Is, can we do something during the night? Is that a oh yeah, you can do yeah. If there's something <laughs> yeah, if, if, if uh, what would uh, what would happen during the night, Baldor, that uh, might come through? Now's the time. Some are so, <laughs> so, yeah, as uh, as as like night falls, and everyone sort of goes to sleep, Boulder will sort of <laughs> separate himself, and like sort of like look at his 
like hands as they feel like a little different mm -hmm. and sort of like make a fist and like to his surprise like it bursts into flames <laughs> um, and like spreads head again and like it disappears and you do Does hear, again, you do hear now... yeah, you hear in your in your head, you will bring balance. Those words ringing in your head. He does it again, and like now lightning, like sparks from it. And he's like, ah, this is this is weird. Uh, and he goes uh, to wake up Zisa. If that's okay, like stands stands next to her for a while, looking, and then sort of like gently taps her shoulder um, and asks, "Do you know anything about this?" And I quickly gotta open the door, otherwise my girlfriend will be locked out of the house. Mm, that's okay. You go do what you gotta do. Yeah. Play out the scene while he's gone. <laughs> I I guess this this will. Uh, uh, Cece just opens her eyes. Like, she doesn't start awake or anything. Her eyes just open, and they go to um, Baldur's, Baldur's Fist um, and sees it lit up. Can I roll, like, an Arcana or Religion or something? Um, you can hey, I... um, you can roll a Religion. I think that would be better in this case. Okay. Ah, I mean, whatever's going on, there's there's definitely magics you've not seen Baldor do before, but you're also obviously you did see the events of the other night, of uh, the other day. Sorry, I'll, clearly uh, something's different. Yeah, so she'll just say you have manifested some sort of ability, possibly the same way Blythe manifested the lightning when we first began adventuring together. Maybe speak to him. I do not know. That's disconcerting. This... <sighs> I can okay. watch you use the ability more often. Perhaps that would give me some insight. But as of now, I do not have an answer. Oh, so you want to watch me, huh? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it would be required to learn more, yes. Okay, I... I, I mean, if, if you get any more insight, I would be happy to... to hear of it. Z Zisa um, sits up and stands up and says, Come with me. And she will just walk away, like, away from people. I do okay. it and then say give me some time and you recognize that she's ritually casting detect magic at which in, in, in which time she does not speak to you and does not look you <laughs> so you're just standing there for 10 minutes awkwardly <laughs> <laughs> and then she will uh, push her hands up from herself and um, open her eyes and there's a slight like light to them and she will look at you and say now use your ability okay he will form a fist and strike is that a rock mm -hmm. i'm standing yes yeah, absolutely strike the rock i'm quickly gonna have to read the ability mm -hmm. um it, normally this is when you strike a hostile creature so I'm not sure. No, that's okay. If, For flavor, like, it will say that it's it's happening as you uh, as you. Okay, as your I'm going striking. to say like wide. lightning sparks from his fist, and as he like hits the the stone, like rainfall increases and wind or wind increases. So one of the two you can choose, James. So I think as Baldor, you start you do start punching this rock, and uh, you know a few times, and I'm assuming different. Um, Effects are happening as you as you're doing this a couple of times, 
And yeah, see, like you know, ZC, you can definitely see it just starts to rain around you uh, as as this as 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 he starts doing this. And with my detect magic, do I sense a, a school of magic? Uh, do I know if it's arcane, divine? Um, you're definitely getting evocation, conjuration. No, you're you're getting sort of. It's more elemental than that. Uh, it's 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 something a bit more. Um, yeah, I'm going to say more sort of elemental based stuff is going on, if that makes sense, rather than uh, the normal schools of magic you're used to seeing of, of things. It's odd to see, um, but it's um, it's interesting, but it's very different. But I, I'm going to say that you're probably picking up that. Obviously, yes, he's doing these different effects from his fists. But you do think he is affecting the weather <laughs> as he's doing this. Your new ability seems to be tied to the elements. Much like yourself, it is unrefined. A bit chaotic. <laughs> Perhaps if you were to hone this ability, it could become more useful. Stronger. But it does not seem to be divine uh, or arcane in nature. I, I do not know why this is happening to me. Your brother is a druid. Perhaps you will speak to them. Well, he did not seem very pleased when he saw me doing what I did. That is irrelevant. He may still know. Yes, may maybe. Maybe I should talk. You can also uh, speak to Blythe. I know that he manipulated lightning before. Maybe he knows. Yes, maybe maybe that's uh, a good idea. Maybe I'll talk to <laughs> anything to avoid talking to his brother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fair enough. Is that all? That... I mean, yes. Unless you have anything you wanted to say, or share. she walks away. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. Dad. Um, so do you, does Boundor disturb anyone else that night or does he go back to sleep for the, for the, to the morning to sleep on it? Oh, he, uh, walks up to, to blight, uh, resting and I'm going to just wake him up. I, I have no boundaries. I don't care for other people's sleep, <laughs> sleep schedule. Uh, fair enough, Blythe. Yeah. Uh, standing over you is, uh, yeah, is, is the form of Baldor as he sort of shakes you, shakes you awake. Um, can, uh, <clears throat> uh, can I help you? What? I have a question. Uh, Caesar yes. said, said, reminded me that you were able to, like, conjure lightning or control lightning of some sense. Okay. Um... I can't remember. You know, that. that's all right. No, <laughs> do so you know you anything about yeah. this? And he sort of like sparks up his his fists again. So, Jamie, what um, you're what you're forgetting is that early on you were knocked down and you had to use your toss oh, ability to come back yes. around, and uh, some saw that. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> but Zisa didn't forget because she's Zisa. Mm -hmm. uh, right. What? <clears throat> Let me wake up a sec. All right. What what's happening? You do you know what causes this? And he like barks up his his fists again, and like lightning shoots from it, and arcs out from it. And... Yeah, his fists are literally like lightning. <laughs> yeah, in the moment. So can I? Uh, so I know what causes my my stuff, like. Is there any way I can? Because I know that Baldor is not a Tess. 
you definitely yeah you're very aware that he is not one or not that one uh as to what he is you have you have pretty extensive history knowledge don't you i think as well so i think you can uh roll me a history check oh i'm yeah i'm trained in history i mm -hmm. wouldn't say <laughs> yeah i'm gonna say it's gonna be one Ooh. of one of your uh one of your skills on that one um you've heard of legends of people that are able to make their fists into into things like this and and uh yeah there is there is always stories of the the wanderer um but that was centuries ago uh, uh, a monk that wandered the earth um righting the wrongs balancing the world <laughs> but that's legends from centuries ago there's there's some legends i know of of uh of a certain monk that could uh, conjure different elements uh, through their attacks, but uh, I mean, this was this was a this was legends from a long time ago. Uh, it's just what did what did you show me? Uh, lightning or something? Is it? Yeah, fire. lightning. But uh, lightning. But there's also this, and then fire, <laughs> and then oh. poison, and then. I don't know what what other elements there are, but and, and the rain the, and the rain around you is just getting heavier and heavier as uh, as this is going out, and the winds are picking up. Oh my god! Uh, well, this it, it wow, this is this is uh, this is something else. Like that, this surely is to do with this legend. I mean, maybe the legends are true. It was. It, I I sort of retell the the wanderer stories uh, that I feared, and this monk cast fighting off whatever. You know, was there stories, James? Or can yeah, I make them yeah. Up? There was there's plenty fighting of le legend, like... legends of this of this being wandering wandering the lands, righting wrongs, bringing balance to the world. Um, it was said that they would, uh, yeah, were able to control the weather uh, and right the wrongs of the of, of this world. Where, and, but this, uh, this was about uh, a, a severely brave and selfish individual, and I, I can't imagine that you two would hold the same values. Uh, no disrespect, of course, Baldo, but uh, you surely know that <laughs> you're not quite the same as this legend that I speak of. Maybe I it's a trial. Maybe you need to become someone better than you are maybe this is something given to you throughout all this to excel and be become the better person you can be I... how did this monk come to be how did he gain his, his powers do you know there's no I assume there's no no, they, there's, this, there's only never. stories of what they did. There's not stories of where they came from and what they or where they went. If if in a hundred years or so you you became like this wanderer, no one's going to retell stories of you know you being uh, different and in, it's normally about what's what's happened and the the legend that surrounds it. Not I mean I, I'm talking like King Arthur and stuff is obviously a bit different here, but. Uh, they they talk about the, uh, the the things that I've I've heard of the accomplishments, not the not not the becoming. Well, like listen to me. Like, would you really want people to be talking about your your previous uh, endeavors before your accomplishments in years to come? I mean, maybe I should prove myself. I think you've, I think you, you definitely got it in you. There's sparks of, I, I mean, of greatness in you. I, surely, I mean, like, look at this now. I mean, this I'm, is something. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you see that in me. I, I have been thinking this about myself all my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this oh. is exactly what I don't mean, though. Uh, it's overconfidence. This, this, this. <laughs> this front you put on, you don't need to be like that. Like I, I, I spend a lot of my life observing people and seeing how they operate. 
there's, there's definitely sparks of of a greater person in you. I say, maybe this is the this is how you can prove it. Maybe I, I'm guessing this all like sparks visions of like the monk I see in my dreams sometimes. Yeah, you certainly uh, you certainly know that they yeah, you've been having dreams of something but of like that, but yeah, it, but they were just dreams. Yeah. Or were they? Well I, I, I'm not telling you about <laughs> those dreams. Uh, I'm I'm keeping those all to myself. That's, that's uh, but I will well, thank you for your talk and the this has been very clarifying. Uh, anytime. And then he will, before <laughs> going back to bed, he will like sort of walk past Hoder, consider talking to him about his abilities, maybe like spark up like a fist one more time to make the rain a little bit heavier, <laughs> and then think better of it and go to sleep. <laughs> No, okay, no problem. So, uh, unless there's anything else, I think this will be the point, yeah, where uh, slowly but surely people rouse the next morning and, um, yeah, the fire is dulled, the weather is drizzly and poor, and, um, yeah, Harolf sort of, um, as he's sort of get me, getting everyone together and get around what's left of the campfire and, uh, it's time for us to discuss the next steps then. We've got a, I'm guessing, a lot to figure out and what we're going to do. And uh, we need to come up with some plans for our next steps, our crew, and these other fine folk and decide what, uh, what we're going to do as a group. We've got a few things now. I, we now have banners for the ships. Um... Unless anyone has any problems, I'm happy if we fly under the own banner, if that's okay by everyone else. I would feel more comfortable with that. And then we can either run two ships or possibly three, but with thin numbers, it's going to be up to, up to us to decide. We're also going to have to decide what crew are going to stay with us, uh, what ones we're going to trust on the on either one or, or both of the other ships. And we need to figure out, yes, yeah, what we're going to do crew-wise and uh, go from that. From my point of view, I think there's uh, a few things left on our agenda. And uh, the main one being we, we need to find the drift hall. We need to catch up with the Volve and figure that out. Now, obviously, as it's floating on the sea, we have no real clue where to find it at the moment so I'm my gut would be we head to the well of wisdom and uh, see if there are any of the Volve still there uh, that's heading north for many days and then we try and they would have lifted off from there beforehand so maybe they will have a better clue as to where they've drifted it's not an easy trip and I'm a bit averse to going there again it's been a long time for me but uh, I know Frida you've possibly been there before uh, and uh, basically uh, Frida you have been to the Well of Wisdom uh, yep. previously so yes you are aware of the uh, the ice uh, caverns and the uh, and the area which the well is uh, is is located and uh, yeah it's not an easy trip uh, from from here but um, it would be doable. Uh, what he's actually suggesting is not bad. There is probably um, some left of the Volve there, um, so that that's certainly uh, that's certainly something uh, we can uh, bear in mind. The other option we would have is we we know roughly the location of where a camp of the warrior. We could go investigate or raid that and see what we uh, what what's actually going on with those before we go uh, dealing with the Volv. That seems like another reasonable course of action if we have more information. 
Maybe, uh, maybe that'll help the Volve make choices that we need to. I'm not against either of these sort of major options, uh, unless anyone else has something else more pressing in mind. I think they're probably the the strongest things that we need to think about. But we have to decide as a group which way we're going to go. Well, um, I think if we want to get as much answers as possible for the Volve, I think the Wark clan camp might be our best option. As you said, I've traveled to the Well of Wisdom. It is, it is not a... Not an easy task, and with and it's not what's a short trip. The no, it will take us a long way, a long way north. Uh, yeah. It will make things well. We'll be out of the area. That's certainly for true. It doesn't mean we could never come back to the war, but it would be more difficult and take time. We may not have if if um, the the war are under a similar spell as the Luten, where we might still be able to save them, I will say, while looking at Blight. You're muted, Jamie. I didn't want to try and um, sway anyone's decision uh, for my own benefit, but I, do, I would like to try and sort something with my clan. Um, as we know, that now they're under a spell, and they weren't just attacking us um, without due course. I think uh, for me it would be beneficial, but what does everyone else think is more pressing? And we do have one other thing I've, we haven't considered or talked about. Obviously, uh, we have the little girl in our, uh, in our possession. She is clearly of import to the Volve. I don't know if that sways us in one direction or not. I, Like I said, I personally think both are reasonable courses. The more we have information-wise, the better. I'm just not sure how we're going to deal with the war. We've not exactly found a good way to deal with the Latan that we're taking over either. But more knowledge is a good thing, not not less. The more the Volve know, the more they can act. If we do decide to interact with the Law Clan, I may have a technique that could help us with their influence. I would need to test it on somebody who is afflicted with the Ironwood. We, we still have that, don't we? Do we have any captors? No, we got the, uh, the thing that was inside Hodor, though, right? You do, you do have, uh, you do have the thorn that was in Hodor. Yes, that is definitely true. Yeah. Could we potentially, mm. you know, infect one of us with it? And I do not think that wise. For one. The influence should come from the original source so that we would know how to interact with it in the future. Were we to do it ourselves, the effects could be different. And thus the test would be... Conclusive. Yes. Uh, and also, now that we know that um, through Th Thonia's might, I can... I might be able to help a lot, a lot of them out with the divine. It, it, it might sway some of the war into our our side, not against whatever evil is corrupting all of these clans. All of a sudden, it may be between Frida's divine influence and my arcane approach, we could possibly have an answer. Then it sounds like what we need to do is figure out a way of looking close near the outpost that we know of and see if we can find a scouting party or uh, something along those lines. There's bound to be ships and folk around at some points. 
If we play our cards right, maybe we can take a group unawares without them warning the main camp. I think that would be the main risk. If we tried to to take on a little group and any of them escaped, we would, yeah, they would be warned and then whatever was going on in the main camp would be harder. But that doesn't mean it's not doable. We just have to be quick. And I'm sorry, Blythe, but if any of them were getting close to escape, we would have to make sure they couldn't. By any means. It's something that I've I've made peace with. You know they're done. not themselves. Yeah. We'll save would, the ones we can, I guess. Yes, I agree that I would... They would prefer to be it this be this way anyway. They yes, we will prevent trouble. Router from throwing any more of them in the sea once they have died. Yeah, that didn't go very to plan, did it, last time? No, I haven't seen the right dead rise like that. It's, uh, it's very strange. Hmm. Rest assured, I, uh, I've made my reason in with it and I will be on board 100% this time and the Volv obviously know something for sending that raven with the, with the location anyway mm -hmm. and then it sounds like we're, we're coming around to a plan then it, it seems like the best option is, as you said if we went to the well of wisdom we would not be able to get back to the war any anytime soon and uh, it, whatever is plaguing them could worsen and take over the whole clan which we obviously do not want indeed then it sounds how like far we have a away plan. is the how far away is the war clan from where we are now i think it's about four days travel back the roughly the way we came we made speed this way for because we saw the volcano exploding and uh we thought uh we'd need to be on a rescue mission mission which we have managed to pull off and we have managed to find banners here which i'm not gonna lie that's going to save us a lot of trouble on the seas but yeah it will take us a few days back whereas the well of wisdom that's weeks uh that's weeks out north uh, it's a long run. Very well. Okay, well, we've come to some decisions there, then we have a plan. We know what we're doing. Now the question becomes, what do we do with the crews and the ships? Well, we're going to take all of the named NPCs, and the rest of the schmucks can go on the other ships. <laughs> uh, we also yeah, have but we the, need, we have we need people have the... we can trust, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, he, he also says... We also have the problem of prisoners as well. Uh, the Lutan need to be dealt with. Are they coming with us on ours, or I are they going to be going uh, on the other side? Uh, I will give you that you guys are aware that uh, um, the size of your ships is a uh, is the maximum of fourteen crew, and you can have up to ten passengers on a ship. Uh, that's the max size of uh, of what you can. Uh, what that you is can together, so fourteen and ten. Yes, or... correct. Yeah, you you guys count as crew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's going to be fourteen <laughs> uh, uh, fourteen crew total with you. Well, that's including yourselves. And well, up if to we 10 just passengers. take all of, if we take all the small people, those only count as like point five people. Ah, so I we see. take Sadi, we take Frying, yeah. we take the uh, Flint Barbarian. That's only one and a half people. <laughs> <laughs> so how many people do we have to to divvy up? Uh well you have got um yeah yeah there's a, there is a fair fair few crew. Uh what we I'll, what I'll do is I'll start going down the list of people that are here and what they what their abilities start to give you uh if they are aboard your ship and we, then you'll have We to also decide. need people that we can trust on the other ships as yeah. well so they don't Correct. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, it's honestly up to you. Um, you are very aware it's probably easier to fill two than three. Uh, if you're going to go to three ships, it's going to get pretty thin. Um, we'll just 
but yeah, it yeah. will uh, it will be I up think, to you I guys think. to decide on the, on that one. Um, so yeah, you obviously you already know what um, I'm assuming. Harolf is uh, is is a go for being on your on on your ship or uh, get rid of him. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> just just get rid of him. Um, but obviously, you know, he gives you two um, two possible uh, crew actions uh, that you can uh, that you can keep with him if he's uh, if he is around because um, he can give you advantage on an attack, etc., and things like that in in combat. So what you ha- what you guys have to do is you have to pick your crew which will be one step of this. And then the second one is you'll have to tell me whenever you're going into an event, which three are you, are you, are you keeping uh, uh, with you as a group as your B team for that, for that period. So you can use their effects if that makes sense. So uh, there's going to be a, a bit of working out your, uh, your B team crew. I will supply afterwards the actual uh, sheet with all of the, uh, of the information, but yeah, you know, Harolf can give you extra actions. He can take a weapon attack for you uh on uh as part of your uh crew actions which you now have four around uh that you can deal with or you can assist as a one action um for on on an attack yeah Sidi, you know that uh i'm assuming she's probably getting a spot on your uh on your roster yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the on, on the main ship uh, on that one you know you you're aware that obviously mechanically she is the one that can um uh, make a wisdom check, and if she's successful, she can give you one d one d four hit points and stabilize, which is very very hand, handy on that one. Yeah, uh, it's we're more into important the than attacks. Sorry, say again. I said that's more important than attacks. Uh, I so. personally think so, but you you guys have to uh, <laughs> you have to decide if you're if you're taking her. Yeah, in. but do we want to take her into battle though? That's the, the yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, she I, might die. I do not care that she's a child. <laughs> ah. Without her, I'm pretty sure I am the only one that can heal us, which is kind of. I can heal. Oh, you can heal. Zisa can stabilize because she's trained in medicine, but that she doesn't heal. I don't. And, need I healing. Found, and I haven't found the shit to create healing potions yet because we haven't really forged anywhere yet. No, you've unfortunately being on a being the first place you went to was a lava island. Uh, yeah, was wasn't wasn't the ideal for for that, but it, it's coming. It's coming. Um, does does Edgar have any healing? She has divine, like aura, right? Uh, yeah, Zisa she does. Picks that up. She does. She uh, she is, uh, but it's not uh, it's not actually healing. She does. Uh, she has the crew action of for two crew actions on a, in a round. You can have her uh, add magical um, extra damage to an attack as radiant damage. So you can get an extra two d six radiant damage using that uh, using that ability of hers. If she's with you guys on uh, when you're out uh, on on a, on a on a, an expedition, okay. um, dealing but, with dealing with the people with the ironwood influence, that would be pretty big. Could be could be very very useful. The only thing that uh, it does on on this one is uh, you have to declare this before you do the, your attack. So you, it's two crew actions to do it uh, out of your four that you're getting around, obviously. So it's it's quite high. And then, um, yeah, obviously it'll be two D hit, two uh, D six extra radiant damage if you hit. Um, so it's yeah, you, but you so you have to take the risk, but you can you can use that. So yes, yeah, she, she's another one that you may want to possibly have uh, uh, have on your on, on your side there uh, uh, as a uh, as as an option on that one. Uh, I'll go back up the list to some of the higher ones. We have Risa. Um, you've already had her use her abilities so she was uh she basically costs you one crew action and she can just make a basic attack uh that uh gives you basically 1d6 plus one bludgeoning damage uh on a round so you could have three of those uh sorry four of those if you were just going to use those as plain attacks um as who, as your who crew is she again she well, she's the, the one that we found wandering around down there. Um, and, so and down there. This, this one, right? Uh, no, that's, no, that's Toki. Um, she's uh, she's one of the ones that uh, you saved from the um, from nowhere. She was the one of the homeless that Hodor um, sort of found for as um, oh. an offered space as crew. Um, yeah, is she, she a halfling or a dwarf? Uh, oh. No, she's. Uh, I th- I think she is a dwarf in this case. Yeah, right. after I, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll double check it in a, in, a, in a little bit. But she's incredibly strong um, on that one. Um, but Risa, Risa is here somewhere. But yeah, she's just a, uh, a. It's a very basic attack, but it's you know it it will do do a bit on on that front. 
I'll go back down to where uh, Toki is on this one. Uh, Toki, uh, she has the ability, um, as a reaction, she can uh, take the damage that would be done to your t character by an attack um, in, instead of yourself. Um, if this damage is enough to use up her hit points, she will die. So it's kind Good. of like um, you, uh, she can she can be like sort of a yeah uh, for one crew action she can absorb. Hits, she's a literal meat shield. She's literally <laughs> like a shield bearer is the best way. Do of we get it. to know what uh, what her hit points are? No, are I'm we... not telling you how many that how man how many she that is. She, 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 no, she's quite strong, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you uh, the the exact number. So uh, could we heal Taki? Um, well, she was certainly she certainly can be healed, and she can also, um, obviously, long rest. She would heal back up to to, no, uh, to normal. It's just if you yeah if you keep using her, yeah, the, does your meat shield uh, yeah pay the ultimate price at some point? Uh, possibly would be the answer. So it's, it's another option that you could take into battle if uh, if you wanted to go down that route. So yeah, she has that one. Um, we have. Um, uh, we have Bloki. Um, Bloki is um, is our, our our bard. Now this is a passive ability, so this is a little different. Basically, if you take them with you, you get the equivalent of um, of basically uh, uh, Song of Rest. So basically, during when you're taking a short rest, you can uh, uh, regain extra one d six hit points uh, uh, when uh, you know whenever you're spending hit die. Uh, so you can have that as a as an option with him, if that makes sense. So uh, interesting. Another, you know, you can maximize what you get out of a short rest. If uh, if you do uh, do feel that you can uh, spare one of your slots for him, uh, he will give you that. Um, I thought Bloki was the lady, and mm. Fjord was the guy. Uh, I think it's the other way around. But no, uh, Bloki is the guy. Fjord is the lady. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. uh, is is uh, is uh, is what, what way I took it from mm. uh, from the notes. But Bloki is just his backup. And Fjord is my backup. F Fjord is the rogue, and yes, uh, so okay. uh, uh, on that one. And uh, yeah, they have a passive ability as well. If you do take them into in into um, things, they have the passive ability of they can um, um, they can help with traps and locked doors. So basically, it's a plus two to passive perception uh, for the group, and it's also um, uh, a plus two for perception checks to do with traps or other dangers. Um, and to any 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 lock picking, you can get a plus two. We do not have a rogue. Right? We do not have a rogue. We sure don't. Yeah. I, I think I, Bloki and Fjord are coming with us. So <laughs> I, 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 but you only have three slots. Remember when you go out. So it's kind of all the weighing up what you're. Yeah, but what you're like, gonna take? They're but, yeah. on our ship. I mean, like. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you got, you got two. We are, we are emotionally attached to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you absolutely. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you've got to decide who's on the ship, which is definitely one thing we're trying to work through here. And obviously, then every event you have to decide which three yeah. are out, are out with you in the. It's hard to trade up. You know which one. You know a healing over that or over. You know different things. It's it's, yeah. it's going to be some tough choices. Uh, on that one so yeah that's fjord and um bloki so they have been done on that one uh we've got halden he is one of the dwarves that you picked up in uh nowhere uh along with uh eggle and the rest of them um basically they are uh, they have the passive ability they can bolster the hull of the ship giving because they are like a repair person for the ship um basically they can add 20 temporary hp to the ship's hull so they can give you, they can bolster the uh, the bolster the strength of the uh, uh, of the ship if they if you if you set them up as the as the key person in uh, in the three you pick for an event that's one, one another one that they will uh, be able to do and um, there is also that, go ahead it's kind of useful yeah or, does the does Halfred have a similar ability the blonde elf half elf person that we found uh, here Halfred in... is actually uh, she's a little different she doesn't do a bolster effect however she Halfred can repair to the damage to the ship over time so she can repair oh. 10 she can repair 10 points per day of hull of hull damage back uh, to the ship to try and to try and improve things so it's and kind this of is like, a thing that we need to have her in our party, or she does does this when she's on the ship. Yeah. So if you tell me that in in these days these that one the slot your three slots she's using one of your slots up, uh, she will that day 
she will she will give you that uh, you know, that ten points of that could be on our travel days. You know? Yeah, but this can be on a travel day. Right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. We, but as long do as you we tell have me anyone? Slots, yeah, you tell me what slots you're using. It's fine. Uh, how, yeah. how many can we take on the ship? Ten. So you've got uh, you've got uh, fourteen crew, and up to ten passengers. And then you've got to decide: Are some of those the prisoners? Uh, because the, there's four prisoners. Would would they end up on your ship, taking up four of those slots? I you... suggest putting one of the um, like one of the heal ship healers on one ship and one on ours, because otherwise, yeah, one um, ship is going to get. Well, does destroyed. anybody have any sort of like ship right abilities like amongst our PCs? I have mending, but I know that it, I don't think it would cover enough of it. But does anybody else have like woodworking have or anything like that? Proficiency in water vehicles, whatever that does. Yeah, yeah you're probably right. better better at navigation. Yeah, um, that's okay. navigation. Ah, my eyes. Um, <laughs> I have herbalism kit. Great, it's very great. helpful. And I can speak primordial. Does that help? You can speak uh, to the boat more than you, you know. <laughs> Okay, so do we want like something that will be useful in battle or something that will be useful in between battles? We need I... a bit of both, do we? That's the thing. Yeah, James, is there anyone else that you need to give us lists yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, there's still a few. Okay. Uh, there's still a few more on the list. Um, so, uh, um, Frein, um, the uh, the little wicker person that you've uh, uh, that you've run into, uh, they uh, they give off the passive ability of uh, of basically uh, a low level lucky basically you would re-roll ones on any attacks or skill checks oh that's, that's very useful yeah they're all, all very to... useful this is the problem yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and yeah. the thing is is like we have six pcs and then her and then uh yeah, city so that's, eight, that's eight people right there which means we can only add six more named npcs to our boat you technically you could have passengers as well, but yeah, it's it's up to you how many. How oh, Sadie would be a passenger, obviously. So, okay. Wait, who who did I miss? Because I am I'm making a list here, but I I, I have I have Harolf, Sadie, Egger, Halfred, Frein, Risa, Tauki, Bloki, Fjord, and Halden. I think is all we've mentioned so far. Oh, Roger. Router, as in we need router. She's yeah, true. She <laughs> thought yeah. 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 Would yeah. Hope she would come with us. I, I, I forgot to write her down. Okay, I'm, that's I'm, amazing. Wow, thanks. She's swimming behind us. I'm sorry, Drew. Right I'm very sorry. No can, we, can we just take the main lieutenant <laughs> uh, prisoner and just get rid of the other three? Just the dragon. Oh, the other three nobodies. Just have I the mean, dragon. They, they, they can join us passengers, right? And you I can, think it's up to you. You can, um, you can use what yeah, numbers you want. Yeah, I think Balder yeah. would like say like, oh, like he doesn't necessarily want to stay like with a lot of Orm people because he's afraid for their safety. So oh, I don't know if was the same on that. Oh, look at you, Bonding. Risa would <laughs> absolutely, uh, Zisa would absolutely vouch for the Lutan not being influenced as of right now. So if there was any sort of worry about uh them acting uh in that way she could not only vouch for that but also be monitoring for that so when so when we like land to to i don't know forage or whatever we do she could then do another lap around all the people to make sure that nobody has gained that sort of um influence so she she could not agree with Balder, but at least say that. Fair enough. Uh, we've had, we've got a couple more, a few more on here on the on the list that we do have to go through. So Thorngird, the uh, the Orn sort of semi leader from around here, um, she comes with the prerequisite of obviously you have to run under an Orn banner um, as uh, on and to have it, have her on the ship. But basically, she gives if she's out with the group, she is plus three to persuasion checks. Uh, and any diplomacy type stuff, if that makes sense. So she is useful well. on on that. I one. mean, we need we need that. Yeah, we need that. <laughs> hey, I have a plus zero. We'll be fine. I mean, uh, yeah, I have a plus we, four. Three is almost. Not, yeah, I was gonna say three is almost. I'm I got, more. I got plus two, so intimidating than persuasive. 
Fair I mean, enough. that's Imitating. useful, and that really covers our weakness as well. Again, I mean, yeah. she'd probably want to keep an eye on the on the prisoners, right? What does the what does the dragonborn guy do? Since obviously he does something. He is. Uh, <laughs> you do not know. Oh, yeah, there's no. At, at the moment, he's a prisoner. Well, right? James, James, keep your secrets. Yeah, I was gonna, fine. I'm going to put that under. It's not been unlocked. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. It's your business. Business. We just need to give him a good shake and be like, what no, you we do? need to level up. We're not the right level. What's, <laughs> what's her name? Uh, if I. Uh... Thorngird. Thorngird. Oh, yes. you mean the dragonborn? No, no, no. The, the lady from the. Yeah, yeah. Thorngird is the, uh, is, is the woman with the plus three uh, persuasion. Okay. And then we get in, we've got um, not many more to go now, but uh, there is Raldan, one of the Orn that has been saved here. Uh, they are. Uh, they have the ship passive ability of map making. Uh, they Ooh. basically uh, they can assist the players by creating detailed maps of unexplored territories they explore, meaning that potentially leading to new discoveries and strategic advantages may occur if they are uh, if they are on board your vessel. We are never about strategy. We don't need no, that. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, but Bring the it. completionist in me is <laughs> potentially leading to new, the way, the way it's worded well is potentially leading to new discoveries or strategic advantages. Yes. So yes, another another possible uh, possible of, uh, option there, and then yeah, there is obviously a number of Orn uh, uh, other people around that uh, uh, are less uh, are less likely to be a thing at the moment. But uh, what, what for now, these are the ones you've unlocked. Uh, that one, um, sorry, the map picking is Raldan. Huh. Oh, there's an L there, Raul. Okay. Yeah, R A L D A N, Raldan. And then the last one, I don't think I've done this one, is Erica. Uh, and that one is, uh, she is passive, increase boat rations over time, uh, fish at sea, game on land. So they will uh, add to your food supplies, uh, allowing you to, to go longer, um, you know, on longer voyages uh, without it, having rations. Can you spell that name? Because I did not get that one. Uh, it's E I R. I K R. So I may may not Erica. be pronouncing it best, but I'm saying Erica. Yeah, as the, as the closest I'm getting. But they're the key Erica, ones that I'll, you I'll uh, you've it. unlocked so far. And uh, yes, uh, that's a that's a lot of different. And uh, she's an Orn Raider. She is one of the Orn that you have Orn, uh, okay. that you have saved. Yes, yeah. Oh man. Um. So can you get your crew, uh, your crew number down to uh, uh, within the fourteen plus ten passengers is going to be the question. And who, I, who I think is on we that can list? just say, I think we just say right away that Risa, with her basic bitch attack, isn't really that important. Oh yeah, get no, that. Re Risa, I, I, Toki, <laughs> I personally also didn't really value that much. I mean, we've got Frida's interception, which is. Just a better version of what she yeah. does. So we we don't need any attackers. That's no. the, we don't need that. I mean, but we got to bring Rolf. We don't have yeah. to bring him along with us. He has come on the boat. Although, so yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. talking crew now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you basically at the moment, I think you really need to work out who's on your ship versus the uh, probably filling one of the other ships. Yeah. Because yeah. James is going to kill everyone on the other ship. Is what he's telling <laughs> us. <laughs> So um, you sound like you're I'm playing a Bioware game. That's insane. <laughs> so I, for for now on our ship, this is the list I made. You can disagree with us if you want. I disagree. Uh, you have to say the <laughs> name. I disagree. I disagree right. with a principle. I disagree. Uh, Rolf, Zisa, Blade, Baldor, Hoder, Frida, Router. So that puts us at um, what eight? So you're allowing uh, Rauder to come now? Seven? Yeah, you're not uh, behind anymore. No, no, then... Then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh... Sida? Sida? She... Shite? Not, not Shite? Uh, what? Uh, uh, no, no, the, the little girl. I forget her name. Oh, Sidi. 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 I cannot pronounce her name. Like, Don't I, worry, I, I'm not even pronouncing it right, and I, I've heard yeah. the How pronunciation guide. Yeah. Sidi is more of a passenger. It's S-I-D-D-H-E, really -E, but it's supposed to be something like Seether, or something along those lines, if you were yeah. I know. Oh, I, is couldn't, it like I couldn't do it. Oh, it's, it's Welsh. It's Welsh. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Again, uh, no, but... Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I also had Egil, Bloki, and Fjord, because those two are, are an, an, like... You can't get rid of Bloki and Fjord. Right? I did behind. wonder. No. I, just wonder. I um, don't... I don't think we should have Bloki. I, he's, his ability is not very useful. Them. You cannot <laughs> separate them. But it would, add, it would add to their, like, tension, or their love tension, though. That they when that, when that other ship the goes down, it'll just give her a tragic backstory. She'll become an adventurer. I, I, yeah, I, I, when I dies, take, take it up. I, it's fine. I, I put Hilfrid, which was the, the I think, the ship. Uh, She's the one lady. that can repair the ship. Like, yeah. instead of giving the temporary hit points, which is what Halden can do, yeah. Alfred can, can legitimately repair the ship. We can switch these out I, I, I don't and then i mean uh, i'm assuming have... we're not sending the boats to different areas so we can swap out these people as we need to right like yeah. this is that, like a that's fleet now on, that's honestly up to you but it's starting to become more of like a raider group uh would be the would probably be the, yeah. the same thing and there's probably unless you come up with some reason i mean there won't be i'm not saying that there won't come a time where you can't decide one group goes here and another go group sends a message somewhere else. You can certainly have those options, but for now, I'm assuming you guys are keeping the two, the two ships as uh, as as a group for now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can't call on the abilities of the people on the other ship, if that makes sense. And unless unless you do the full swap out of uh, one, you know, people yeah. on, people off, and all the rest of it. And I, as as for the last two spots, I have Thorngird and Raldon. Uh, I don't have the little halfling wicker person, which I know you guys... Yeah, but he was creepy. We need him. He's too we flammable. need creep factor. Um, I think Zisa would really push for uh, for Frein just because of the nature of, of what they've spoken of and how we need to get them to the Orn to suss out exactly what is going on with them. Yeah, you do think they would be useful to be taken to the vault, so that is certainly something. I think non-negotiable we 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 gotta have Sidi with us because yeah. obviously she's a tiny child and we feel very responsible for her. Not Zisa as a person. But but, the but players, I'm sure the party yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, then Rolf as well. All yeah, we of us. parental figure. In Zisa <laughs> could <laughs> actually <laughs> argue for her Rolf being on a separate ship because she has message and she can communicate between the ships. So if he has anything that he wants to say, he can signal her. We can get close enough for her to, to figure out what he wants. The only thing He's going to I be would captain think on, on the ship. Yeah. Uh, I am the captain not me. now. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to decide who the me. captain was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I am a protector of the Volves, so I've traveled as a captain of the ship quite often, so kind of <laughs> probably would be. Probably I wouldn't feel comfortable being a captain of the yeah. ship. Zisa legitimately does not care. <laughs> mm, she would actually kind of ask Harolf, who he deems to be the secondary captain. Yeah, of put, this it in party. Hand. yeah. <laughs> put it in James' hand. Yeah. Put it on that one. Um, I, I think... Probably knowing the links to the, the Volve, I think he would suggest if that if if you are going down to go down that road, I think Frida probably would be uh, the next sort of um, um, sort of possible. Or yeah. he would say Thorngird as the uh, he has to sort of at least suggest that as she is quite. Um, oh yeah, she is like a quite oh, yeah. and leader. quite leader like. He would say she but would Frida be she would be capable. Them. Yeah, she would be capable. We just got the uh, ability to to do um, what's it called the water vehicle, right? So that makes her a good I'm candidate. Also, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm also I'm, impartial. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, the, I'm not part of any clan. Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. I, I would say, literally, from Harolf's perspective, he would say Thorngird and Frida were the top two choices. Uh, if if you were if you were asking him, agreed. Well, Captain so, Frieder it is then. <laughs> I mean, if if Thorngood wanted to be captain, she wouldn't. Uh, she would just oversee the, what's happening. But I, I'd be happy for her to be captain because she is like technically the clan leader, right? Of Orn. So 
well, you're Rachel, also she's, the, she's yeah. the highest ranking on here. That doesn't necessarily mean. Oh she's yeah, the, yeah, 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 she's not, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's not the she's not the, the, the clan leader. Although she does have one of the symbols of the of the clan leadership on her, if that makes sense. Joe is and, also the face uh, of this campaign, so <laughs> yeah. her, her ability is passive. You said right. Correct. Yes. Yeah. If you uh, okay. if, if you have her in your in your in your selected slots, basically she's then giving you the passive ability, uh, the passive persuasion plus three. Basically, is what you're getting if uh, on on persuasion checks if she's in the group. But you obviously have to use up one of your three slots to 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 put her into that uh, position. So if, I'm just putting I'm putting Risa and Talki on the other ship automatically. Does everyone agree with that? Yeah, Risa and Toki. Yeah, yeah. And then also, Erika or whatever her name was. Uh, Erika. Yeah, she yeah. was. Erika was the one that was. Uh, she increases boat rations over time. Yeah. I, I think yeah. for now we could put it on the other ship, but when we want to go to see the Well of Wisdom, it'd probably be good to have them. That's a, probably a very good call because when you yeah when you're dealing with when you know you're dealing with a longer run. That's probably a reasonable, mm -hmm. a reasonable call. Then I think either Heldon or Hilfrit would also be on the other ship. I don't think we need both. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, I just one, like the idea one, of, one is giving you temporary hit points. One, yeah, is I like the idea of, of legit actual repair. I, I also yeah, okay. like the idea of Horov being on the other ship because at least we know for sure we have somebody extremely trustworthy captain in the other ship who can Not. see into the fucking future gang don't yeah. forget about that he's essentially uh uh Only what's that one level. what's that one character from from marvel help me out he, he's electra and also his thing is only just an attack really yeah two attacks so, two, and they're two beefy attacks. but yeah they're just attacks fair enough yeah no no it definitely uh definitely uh makes sense and, um, okay, so I'm, I'm I'm putting Halfred on our boat, gang. Just to give you a heads up. Yes. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Okay. Halfred. Halfred is the shipwright. The is she a elf or a half elf? Uh, I believe she was a half elf. I, uh, on that one, I will I will double check that for you. But I think okay. I think she was a no. Yeah, she she's was, the she wasn't she was a pinned elf that was hanging from the. Oh gosh. Okay. So yeah, she's yeah. she's the Orn elf that asked us to find her. Tools? Did we ever find her tools? By the way, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, that um, I, we, we it didn't come up, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let it be that she's got enough of her tools together to to be to be hey, useful. We so did it. Is basically the uh, the way the way I'm uh, going to play. Okay, so we are um, saying we are putting Rolf on the other ship then. Yeah, because like I said, I can communicate with him. I'll just keep message on lock. So okay. And then I can also always send my um, familiar over to the actual boat to check out anything that's happening over there if they get too far away. Well, then I guess we can have bloody blokey and... Yay! <laughs> on the <laughs> since since <laughs> one of the people is not coming on this. Fair enough. So I think the wicker guy should be on the ship. I'm pretty should sure be with us. Very useful. Yeah, I, yeah. I think he should be. I can't remember what it was. I remember it being useful. Yes. Uh, uh, we can re-roll ones. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, oh, then good. definitely. Yeah. yeah, but don't forget, this This is going to be an active party. Correct, so that, it gets harder so when you go to active party mode, yeah. That's Frine be would be a passenger, right? Because we don't really know what Frine yeah. does. Actually, actually, yeah, it literally doesn't matter to a certain extent, because if they are traveling with us, then technically, as long as we don't get attacked on the boat, it doesn't particularly matter no it's only when you go into an event or uh, something's going on you have to tell me unless or unless you're saying it's staying unchanged what your three slots you're going to be using are and for, for okay. whom uh so yeah you have to you have to tell, just yeah give me that as a general a general thing the, 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 one, the one the one that the one that will, the one that would catch you would be things like if it's someone that's that does uh, repairs over time in a day um, you wouldn't be able to suddenly swap that person out if you've said that on this day they're in use, 
and then you go into an event suddenly saying i want to yeah. swap that person out is not yeah you've already used their ability is it like uh, uh is it like preparing spells we do at the beginning of the day and then that's yeah, set probably. i think yeah i, I, I hadn't that, thought of it in those terms test, but, but i think yeah. it's probably you, you just tell me yeah on a daily basis what what which ones are in your uh which ones are going to be in in the slots and uh, i would argue if there's ever an event where we have both boats and the same place at the same time we can actually like plan a raiding party then maybe we can sh swap out from what we choose on the boat compared to what we choose yeah, like, I th going I think into they, someplace. I think there were going to be some outliers. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, I'll certainly give you a little uh, a little extra leeway on on some of that. Um, did what about so, um, posi uh, prisoners? Um, are they going to be using up four slots of your uh, of your passenger passenger lot? Yeah, I think. I, I think we split them up. Yeah, I think we should split them up. We don't need the no names. Just, yeah, we, we just the dragon, dragon board. board. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, we so got to keep the dragon board with us because he does something that we don't know yet. Uh, but maybe one other have? one. Four? Uh, Including oh, the dragon Is board? it only four? Because yeah. we have, have up to ten prisoners. So I don't mind having them with us. Yeah, you have up. So I, you can have up to ten passengers on board. Um, but I don't. I, I would prefer not to have them on the ship with a lot of Orn people. Like, we have Thorngurge, fine. Uh, like that's one person we can handle her, but like if we have her with like all the the crew, uh, all crew of Orn, I, I'm not sure that will go well. So far, it sounds like a lot of the ones that are on your ship are not the Orn, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. You seem like there'll be more on uh, the we can, second. We can ship. have them. We, we don't need. Yeah. We can have all three. Oh, four as passengers. That's five so passengers, including. Uh, six, because we have City and Frying. Oh, so uh, are we considering them passengers and not crew? City yeah. is a passenger because she yeah, doesn't she really do anything. And f frying, frying, I mean, you could make an argument either way, I guess. It's going to be up to you guys. He's not going to be the Frying's strongest just, crew. Yeah, he's very small. Yeah. Does, but we can flammable. use both passengers and crew as our uh rating Correct. as long party. as they're and on your party. ship. Yes. Yeah, as long as they're on your yeah. ship, you can call on them as your as your crew action group, if that makes sense. To Does the wolf spot. count as a passenger? <laughs> the wolf can sit on a, a lap. A the, the wolf is like just just part of me though. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna detriment him uh, for for what on that one. But yeah, you're you're not out. I of, would. You're not out. As well. Okay, <laughs> well, but then. If if my calculations are correct, then we have plenty of space, right? Because like who are we taking except like so we have Hilfred, Loki Fjord? Uh Hilfred, Thorgerd, yeah. Bloki, yeah. Fjord. Oh, I put I put Floki. Thinking it was Vikings. <laughs> yeah, that that well but, when I said the name, I wanted to be like, okay, not Loki, but not Floki. That's why I picked Bloki when I just threw out the name. Okay, so the other Oki. So Oki Pokey. What, what's Reldon's and 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 uh, Reldon was Bullet the Gigan. map maker. So that's the yeah. uh, if 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 they're on board your ship, they have the potential to leading to new discoveries or strategic yeah. advantages. That sounds, that sounds cool. That sounds useful. So yeah. That says if it's on board your ship, does that need to be part of our active crew? Uh, our, our active party. If, if you want, if you want, if you want to have his ability being used, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say he has to fill a slot. Um, but yeah, right, yeah it's right. basically yeah. to get their abilities in use, you have to fill your slots. So uh, he's a long journey guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's so a, I think one, two, long three, journey four, would be Hilfred, Relden, and then. We don't need to worry about long journey. We need to pick the ones that we're using right now. Yeah. I did. Uh, apologies, guys. I've just spotted on my little list. I don't think I've done. Uh, have you had Frania? Uh, F R. Frania? No. -Y -N -I -A. I like a disease. So she is a. She has the ability. She's an accomplished sailor. Uh, she has the ability to improve the stability of the ship during rough rough seas. So she can. Oh, give when's a, that going to come up though? She gives you <laughs> a a a ship based effect of in um of plus three to saving throws when uh um in in those sort of an of, of, of events if uh and if that makes our sense third long journey member is that an orn or is that a uh she is part Lutan. of the orn yeah no yeah she is okay. she is one of the orn and i think that's the last one I'm from on my on my little list okay okay so 
So we have Parolf on the other ship. We have Sidi on our ship. We haven't talked about uh, Egger, the tiefling. I I would like to have her along. It's like a mini smite uh, you can add. It, it sounds mm. pretty okay, to be honest. And do we know she's a cap? Do we want her to be a passenger? or Do we want her to be a, a crew? She is. She crew said capable. she was good at crew. Yeah, yeah she's crew, crew capable. capable. Okay, yeah. so we'll make her crew then. And then, I suppose the rest can just go on the other ship for now because it's coming with us anyway. So I don't think yeah. it matters. So then, and just just split the like no named um, clans members between the ships. No problem. So, yeah. I'll... So Harolf, uh other ship. Sidi, our ship. Egger, our ship. Halfred, our ship. Frine, our ship. Risa, other ship. Talki, other ship. Loki, our ship. Fjord, our ship. Halden, other ship. Thorgird, our ship. Rowden, uh, our ship. Uh, Egger, other ship. Frina, is. I don't know. Yeah, she's the, uh, she's the she's the ship based saving throw. Okay, so. okay, okay. So, because I'm pretty sure with Freena that that fills up our actual legit crew. I mean, Cause... if we're if we're full, then and that's then, that's fine, right? And then, then we've got switch them out if we find more. Sorry, I have thir- I have thirteen of our crew, so I guess we have space for one more. And passengers, we have what's the um. Dragonborn's name, James? Uh, Madresh is the uh, is the Dragonborn's name. Madresh. We don't know what he does yet, but um, you said you wanted to keep him close, right, Seb? Uh, preferably, yes. And then, and there, so Madresh and what? Three other Lutan? Yeah. And at no. the moment, I think we have three Orn on our ship, and then the rest would be on the other ship. Yep. Okay. If my count is correct. And that's Freyne, Freyne, Thornburg, and Ralden. We did it. Well done, we everyone. Well done. We, we, did, we did a part, the party selection. You did your, part, your, your crew and your party selections. On yeah, I mean, the, the, the other ship looks pretty lightly crewed to me, but... They've got, like, loads of uh, They've no, got a no lot names. Of so and so. no names. Okay. And we can switch. And it's them. under her role. It is under her role. Yeah, that's and true. We, and you're also and we you're also one thing as well as obviously uh, yeah yeah. Um, there's three ships. What are you doing about the third one? Is it going to be scuttled? Are you going to leave it here as is? What's the what's the thought process? Scuttled. I'd argue scuttle it. Yeah. Burn it. Viking funeral. Uh, we well, take yeah. take the Lutan flags though, just in case we need them again. Oh yeah, just probably. in case our ship gets burned down again. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm gonna say there is a uh, a section of you guys working out, and I think what you do is because your ship was fairly lightly loaded. Uh, I think what what goes on is is that the the um the kit across three ships is packed into two is probably the best way of putting it. So your your two are fully laden. And then you, uh, yeah, you eventually scuttle the, the third so that that won't um, come back round to to bite in any way uh, on that one. And um, Harolf is like, uh, we'll we'll will keep nearby. We'll, uh, we'll obviously be in contact. ZC, you've got that covered. And um, we'll watch you, and you you watch us, and we'll see what we can uh, we can find out on the seas. We'll be heading south. It's going to be a few days of travel. We're as packed as we can be. I think we need to uh, get this uh, get this show on the road. I think. Before we do, can I speak to uh, Blythe? Absolutely. Yeah. As the ships are being packed and things are uh, moving around, Blythe, there's a moment where Blythe, you're sort of pulled to one side, and Zisa sort of comes up to you. You are familiar with animals. You travel with a wolf. You seem familiar with ravens. Yes? Yes. Yeah. When I used someone familiar, you seemed uncomfortable with my raven because it took the appearance of the animals that you were familiar with. 
Is there an animal that would affect you less, or one that you think would be more effective so, for my needs? Something... The only reason that uh, it was a bit uncomfortable for me is because uh, you made it so similar to the, the ravens that I use. So the, the, what you've got to understand is these ravens are extremely rare, um, and they've only really ever communicated with me and my family. Um, if you want to continue using Raven, that's completely fine. I don't, I don't, it, it, um, I don't really feel that strongly about it. But um, I don't feel uncomfortable with any other animal. If you wish to use any other one, either. I don't have an affinity for any particular animal. I'm looking for the most efficient, which is why I'm coming to you. Which do you think that would be? So, I would like to stay with a bird, as we are going to be on ships. I was just about to say, a bird's probably your best bet. Um, would you prefer uh, something fast, or something that can see very well in the, in the light of the dark? Something. This that... would be something that would be used for scouting, so something with good sight. Um, an animal that can see in the dark would most likely be preferable, as when I look through their eyes, I do not have my ability to see in the dark. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, I would, I I feel like, like Blythe would probably suggest an owl, but I feel like it's a t bit metagaming as well. Uh, Actually, this is why Zisa's asking you, because Conrad wants you to tell her owl. <laughs> see, as, as, a, as an animal expert uh, as I am, um, if you want the sight in the dark and good vision, um, you can't act, can't really go wrong with um, uh, an owl. Could you summon perhaps an owl? I can, yes. Or perhaps uh, th there is like you could have like a maybe hawk, falcon, anything like that for the day. But um, if you want to keep tabs on the night, then I I would probably suggest that an owl companion would be uh, best suited. Thank you. You're and welcome. Zisa just walks off. And Blythe walks off. So, uh, I guess, uh, are we traveling during the day or the night right now, James? Uh, I'm going to say uh, this, it, it's taken a while. We're going to be midday uh, by the time the ships are packed and you've started to scuttle the second, second the ship. So, it's going to be getting on for afternoon when you start heading off on your first day obviously of, of whatever this travel is going to be okay then i would like to um ritually summon find familiar with an owl companion no problem so yeah the new I... form will take shape yeah when you're when you're getting yourself set up and prepared for it is and it then unless um I feel like the owls that Risa has seen have not been like Arctic owls or, or any white owls as far as that. She's probably seen the ones that are common in regular forests. So mm -hmm. probably just like a regular barn owl or regular a tawny owl, I guess. Okay, there we go. Decision so. made. So we'll get we'll get a little token for a, a tawny yeah. owl to come through. That will and be then, uh, not a problem. Unless otherwise asked to do something specific, uh, she's going to spend the rest of the time with the wizard's body. No. To scribe those spells. No problem. Um, have we slept yet? Yeah. This is this is definitely yeah. the next day. You've slept. You've right, rested. You've done all of the all the. Need to roll a d twenty then. Oh yes. Mm. Mm. Oh. That's, I'm okay. I wake up. <laughs> You're alive. I'm alive. Okay. This is good because you've had conversations. So yes, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, all of the all of the above has happened. You guys um, uh, will dish out your the ships as you have seen fit. You've uh, moved your supplies. You've prepared for the uh, uh, for the day ahead. The weather is pretty terrible uh, as you're looking around. It's not uh, it's not looking good out out at seas, but uh, uh, the seas await uh, on that front. The only thing, oh. last thing you have to give me is on this first day, what are you going to fill your three slots of your crew abilities? Which ones are you going to be uh, going to be taking use of? And I'm guessing we'll we're putting Frida in charge of the ship. She's our captain. 
I believe you. I think so. You're going I think that's that what way, we yeah. sussed out. Yeah. yeah okay. I am the captain now. Um, <laughs> I think one of our slots should be Rowden, in case you know we want the map making. You know, since we're just traveling for the next couple yeah. of days. Yeah. How how long will days. it take to get to the? Uh, um, um, Harolf thought four days. So there's gonna be four days of travel going on. Okay, so Reldon, probably. Hilfred is of no use. What does Thorngird do again? I'm sorry, I've been asking this a lot. Thorngird is the one that gives us advantage when we talk to people. We okay. aren't going to talk to anyone on the sea for a while, apart from each other. Why don't we say frying? Because if we have to roll anything and we roll a natural one, that's bad. Sure. Yeah, yeah. and then maybe Freyna, she was like the travel thing, right? Yep. Prove stability. Okay, so all right, fair enough. So your three slots are chosen for the for the day, and uh, you guys will set out to sea. Um, it is good to be back on the water. Um, Frida, you are yeah you're now in in charge of uh, of one of the ships. It may not be under a Volve banner, but it's still uh, it's still good to be able to put your skills to use. Uh, obviously, clearly. Uh, Clearly more accomplished at this uh, than the most. Uh, you've spent a lot of your life on on ships, just even with a bit of bit of time with Harolf. Um But yeah, it's uh, it's good to be back out on the sea. But this is what raiders do. Uh, they they are well well travelled and used to the seas, and it's good to be off of that horrible volcanic rocky island that you guys have been uh, stuck on for 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 quite a long time. I'm going to bring you back through to the uh, through to the map for a moment. So where we are in relation to things, you guys have been up here and dealing with uh, everything uh, on this side of things with uh, with Felagar, and you are now heading back down south, heading this way on the fast currents, heading uh, heading on this front. Um, basically, we have to uh, four days of travel. So who wants to roll the d12 for day one of travel and see see what we're dealing with? I'll do it. Go for it. Never. Did I do it? Okay. I I yeah. So yeah. yeah, the cool. uh, the first day of uh, of travel um, goes without too much incident. The uh, the weather is still appalling as uh, as that's going on and how things are. Uh, Baldur, does he do anything to balance any of that any of that out over time, or is is the weather just staying where it is? So at this point, he hasn't sussed out how. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so no. Yeah, fair enough. So the the rain <laughs> the rains continue unabated. Um, uh, clear 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 waters uh, as as you as you as your first first day of travel will pass without incident as you guys start making your way further south. Who wants to take the uh, the second roll? Oh please, please let me. Go ahead. It's the second dice I've rolled. Oh. Okay, fair enough uh, on that one. Uh, so yeah, a second day will pass, and uh, oh, it's eleven and twelve, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's always, it's always it might, high. It might, yeah, it might be, uh, might be a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, another <clears> another day of travel without any uh, without any issue uh, as uh, as this is going on. Um, yeah, you don't uh, you don't have any anything occur. Um, it's at, getting quiet. On at the road. one point, hmm? when I'm when I'm not with the body, um, can I ask? Hmm. Rauda, for a favor. Sure. What do you need? I would just like you to resist. Try to stay <laughs> planted where you are. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to move you. Uh. <laughs> and I need you to uh, roll a strength saving as you feel a force attempt to push you back. Uh, what am I rolling? Strength saving strength throw. Save, yes. uh -huh. level, level four new abilities kicking in. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, damn. You just firmly plants her feet down and... Mm. 
You feel a force. Definitely you definitely like feel like something is going on around it, but you, you yeah. yeah, you fight against it. But yeah, you have to fight against it. Can I attempt yeah. this again? Yes. Ooh. And you fail, so you feel just an, a, a, a pressure in your chest just push you back, and you skid five feet back on the deck. Uh, she just smiles. That was fun. Zisa nods and says, Good. Thank you. And we'll turn right back around and go back to what she was doing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fair oh, enough. So yeah, with these little interactions going on, uh, yeah, another day of travel will will continue. Uh, will continue on. Uh, who's going to uh, Who's going to go for the next for the next one? The oh, captain, please. me. Go on, I'm the roll, captain. Roll the dice. I'm, roll the dice. No, You're actually, the captain I now. Do. I'm too focused on the uh, the the, <laughs> the day steering day, the ship. Yeah? <laughs> Baldo do can do it. Do it. Roll the roll the dice. Oh, uh, it's obviously going to be an eleven or a twelve. No, one. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, fair enough. Okay, right. So on a one. Um, so as you guys are making your way along on this third day of uh, of travel uh, and things are going on, bear with me. Need to bring you through to another, oh, no. another, another, oh, another no. area uh, as this is going on. This is um, the kraken. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, a one was a, was a one was a kraken. Yes, what? Well no, no, not quite on that one. Uh, you guys here coming up ahead of you guys the uh, repetitive bobbing of wood against uh, uh, against uh, the sides of a, a, a broken up pieces of what was probably a long ship at some point starts to drift into view. Even from a distance, it's clear that there is nobody left alive. Its crew. Uh, are definitely going are definitely corpses as this is going on and you can see three small stunted trees that seem to be rising out of the hull uh, let's uh bring bring this one second here we go uh so yeah this is sort of like floating along on the on the waters coming up ahead um yeah you uh, you're not seeing uh something like this but yeah as you do you uh does your ship do you make your ship get close get closer to what's going on here? And or what's the what's the thought process as uh, as you guys are starting to take this in? Uh, Oda would love you to get closer <laughs> to this. He thinks this is the coolest thing he's ever seen. Zisa will turn to Frida and say, I will contact Rolf, see what he would like to do. Frida is all about the mission, so she <laughs> doesn't particularly care about this. Yeah. She wants to So I will uh Use message to just say orders well, to has, Rolf. Uh, survivors, I mean, should we not? And uh, uh, basically, them? what comes back is in, uh, probably investigate with caution would probably be uh, would be his thing. And I'll send a message back, you know, saying understood. And uh, I will tell the crew. Rolf wishes us to investigate, but carefully. I was very excited. I bring the ship around. Pretty close, not not can, too near it. Can, yeah. can I sort of lean into Hodra and say, close your mouth, you're gonna start drooling in a second. Hodra's gonna elbow you, but not realize um, the effect his gauntlets now have. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so you make, make an unarmed attack? Yeah, so yeah, you would probably normally do it really hard because you know how yeah. like weak so, you are. <laughs> Sixteen, which is like I, ridiculous I for Hodor. Think that is my armor class. So <laughs> yeah, that's a lot <laughs> tougher than uh, than expected, Baldor. As uh, as he as you take the jab, that's amazing. Got him. <laughs> <sighs> I forgot about the gauntlet. Sorry. <laughs> A good one. <laughs> as the as the ship drifts closer, you can see there are on this sort of top part of the deck. There's definitely some signs of 
um, some supplies, some barrels, and there are definitely um, you know, the sights of these three um, bodies literally uh, sort of hanging there. And it clearly looks like these trees are growing off of off of these bodies from what you can as, see as you move closer. As we get closer, can I just cast Divine Sense as we get within 60 feet of it? Absolutely, no problem at all as you, as you do. See what uh, I'm getting from these... Yeah, yeah, you're not getting any sort of sense of undead or any des anything desecrated as you come. It just seems like dead bodies. You're not getting the usual sort of sense of anything more undead related or anything like that as you as you come as you're drifting closer. Um, but yeah, it's, as uh, as as your ship sort of pulls close enough to, uh, what's the thought process? Is uh, is anyone? going to attempt um, to have board and have a look or what's the thought has it been like did this take how long did it take us for, for us to get spot this and then oh this there? would have definitely taken a fair fair few minutes it's not uh you know coming up approaching something on the sea takes time okay i would i would have set up um detect magic as a ritual then no problem no problem um what what you get when you do see the detect magic is that you get that same a lower level, but you do get that same sort of residual energy that you've seen from things like the thorns and other bits before um, are coming from these trees in the same way. Those could be ironwood saplings. They give off the same energy, the same aura that I detected in Holder and in the afflicted Luton and Warclands. When we get close enough, can I hop on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I would also join in the hopping. No problem. I mean, it's e it's easy enough. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not on, in the best condition, but the the boat was is is stable enough in this in this decision. Like I said, there are the three bodies as 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 you see them here. There are a numerous barrels and um and and cases of uh, of different things within the within the boat as well. Um, but what what are you guys up to? Just a general investigation of the boat, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, give me an investigation check and we'll see how it goes. Oh, it was on it 17. Was on rolled 17, back yeah. to 3. Yeah. yeah. So Hoda would have been helping, right? Um, I mean, Hoda yeah. was going to do. Right? I'll let you. I'll let you. Hoda, you, can, you yeah. can roll. If you've got something that you were going to roll, let me know. What were you. Yeah, I was gonna do. Um, I was gonna try and determine whether or not the trees growing out of them is what killed them, or the trees grew out of them because they were dead and you. I'm gonna let you either do Arcana or Medicine in this case. Yeah, I so think me and Hodor would be doing very different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's why I'm definitely Z taking. Zisa's owl. owl is circling this all, by the way, and looking around too. Hey, no no but mm. Seth, he's not here for it. <laughs> he gets advantage <laughs> next thing he does. Oh yeah, yeah. How do uh, yeah, yeah, I got a twenty? Book. You get you get advantage next time. <laughs> Finally Good pays job. off. Finally pays off. Uh, Hodor, for you, uh, you work out. It's very obvious that these things were in, internally within them, and then they sprouted there, and that that's what killed them, and they've literally grown out of the bodies since. So yeah, they they would have been in horrendous pain as these things probably grew in their stomachs for a little bit and then burst out of them um, pretty oh. quickly. But yeah, this is that's what that's what's killed them is whatever is going on with these with these tree tree saplings. Um, and it came from inter it it came internally came internally from this. Can we see what clan these men were from? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. Um, they would be from. One second, let me just make sure I, I've got me me notes on that on that one. Bear with me. I've got to just find the find the note on it. You want me to say what Hoda would say whilst you're looking? Yes, yeah, you go for it. Yeah, I'll just, sorry, I'll just literally just yeah. find this for two seconds while you're uh, while you're doing that. So uh, Hoda will be 
looking through and he'll, he'll work this out and he'll turn and say the trees were kind of planted within them that's what killed them but they would have been in agony the roots would have been kind of going through them I have that femur bone with the ironwood in it I'm sure the previous owner had a similar fate to this maybe that was going to be what happened to me if Thorn stayed in. Maybe it's no thorn, but a seed. Perhaps it acts as other plants do. When it is relocated, it grows in whatever soil it can. In this case, the soil being the body. Uh, they would be from Clan Nattle, is, the, is the, what, what you would be finding. So, High North group. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Hodor, you uh, you pass this information on and yeah. uh, work that out. Uh, Blythe, from your six, um, yeah. The main thing you're finding is is that there's a lot of food Basically. stores. Um, at, lots of apples in barrels is the honest truth. Why have they got so many apples in barrels? <laughs> no, obviously not. Transporting <laughs> food is probably the uh, <laughs> the thing. Basically, <laughs> with a six on his investigation, he's probably not put two and two. Two and two together as uh, as that's all going on. But oh, is there no, anything else you he... guys are doing? Yeah, um, I take um, a little sapling from the tree to propagate it. Uh, take a cutting. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I want to propagate. <laughs> oh, this is such a bad idea. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> Great. Dude, wisdom save. Go ahead. Bro. Yeah. You can definitely, you can definitely try and take a, a little cutting. And just, yep, yeah, on that one. Um, if you give me a nature check, let's see how you do. Can you take a reasonable cutting? Sixteen. Yeah, you, I mean, you you know that you need to cut below a node on a on, on the on the leaves. It's very strange, this metallic kind of wood. Um, but yeah, you you definitely and managed to uh, manage to cut that off. One sapling, uh, one one cutting, shall we? We shall say, uh, as as things are at the moment. Uh, Blythe and the rest of you, anything else going on with the stores or any of the other stuff that's on the ship? What's the what's the thought process? Well, I feel like I've done my bit, so I can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm too. I don't know what what I got distracted no, you've by. Just, the you've apples. Just, you, yeah, you just you you know that there is apples in the stores, but is anyone else up to anything, or is? Uh, is the ship being left to drift or be scuttled, or is the stores being taken? What's the thought process? Uh, do the the trees that are growing do they look like they're sprouting fruit? Um, make an entry check. Oh no! What do we know? I suggest we burn this ship. I'm just worried that they obviously like ate fruit or something, and it started growing in them. Um, that's how the maybe. watermelon start is, isn't it? That's what you tell your kids. <laughs> My kids, don't eat watermelon seeds. That's what Drew tells your kids. Yeah, Drew, stop yeah. doing that. <laughs> stop uh, making yeah, they don't. They don't appear to be. Honest. They don't appear to be actually um, sprouting any sort of fruits or flowers that would become fruits, as far as you can see, uh, router on that, any of that kind of thing. You're not seeing Frida, that. Frida would suggest burning the ship. Yeah. Same here, um, Zisa's owl has been circling, mm -hmm. uh, looking for anything that could be useful, uh, weapons, uh, an, a banner of the Volve or a different banner, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, so she will do that. Um, and my owl has a plus three to this. Okay. And advantage. So since I don't have the owl yet, I'm just going to roll for me and then do the math. Mm-hmm. Ugh. So that's mm. actually yeah. a, an eleven. Okay, uh, fair enough. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can definitely see that there are some. Uh, obviously, these barrels of uneaten apples. There are. Uh, there is uh, what looks to be a little bit of mead um, and some dried breads uh, in some of the in some of the crates and stuff that are open, sort of semi opened, but nothing else of over over interest, if that makes sense, in the moment. Okay, so um, Zisa will say, if you would like to remove yourselves from the ship, I can sink it. Should we not set fire to it? 
Are you going to be leaving the the supplies and the rations behind, or is that coming with you? Guys? I don't know. They're not there to be. I can't see them. <laughs> You've spotted the apple barrels, but that's about it. Uh, how these apples? Uh, I don't want to keep pressing on about them, but um, <laughs> how uh, fresh are they? Yeah, they're still edible rations at this point. It's not. They're not spoiled yet. They will, mm. but they're not spoiled yet. What variety of apples are these? Oh my goodness! So I was actually red, red asking delicious. to see how long they've been out there. That's James, cool. what is the land of origin of these apples? <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, barring that you know it's Clan Nattle that, that are north, um, but yeah, that's uh, but that's not their normal trade. So yeah, it's a bit weird. We didn't know what wolves were. Do we know what apples are? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what you know you know what fruit trees are. Yeah, you're you're okay. fine. Wolves are an unusual thing. So are you seeking I... it as is, or are you uh, are you taking supplies and leaving? Is the question. Oh, I will take a tooth from one of these guys. I haven't <laughs> taken a tooth in a while. Why? Why, Why are you tooth? doing this? <laughs> no, I'm talking one of these days, these teeth are going to come become useful. I'm just. <laughs> are you making just... your own blood magic? Sort of class. Spoilers. <laughs> teeth magic. Teeth magic. Hodor is becoming a tooth fairy. Yeah. Uh, I resisted the bone magic. I didn't really like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> bone zone. Uh, so come on, right? So what's the uh, yeah. yeah? What's the status of this ship? Uh, is it is it being dealt with as is? Are you taking the what is salvageable? I think we should take the apples. I don't think there's any issue in taking the apples. Um, mm. I think they're contaminated. I don't think we should eat anything. I think they've those, eaten yeah. these apples, and that's what's happened. But James, I, um, can James, can I roll something to see if uh, apples ever grow from ironwood, or or if they grow any fruit yeah, whatsoever? You can make a history check. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, history is bad for me. Uh, not bad, bad, but you can do nature. Is, oh, nature would be better. Okay, can thank I, you. Can I aid? Um, yeah, if you wish, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. 16. Uh, 16. No, yeah, you've never heard of the idea of the of ironwood trees sprouting um, fruit or apples or anything like that. Ironwood has never been known to produce fruit, to my knowledge. I believe these are just regular apples. I guess that what's happening is we are... Wait getting a bit weary of everything than apples. Are these apples our chair? <laughs> the apples oh my are apples chair. your chair. <laughs> just take the apples and shoot them. Yeah, well, I said, that's, that's what I was going <laughs> to say then. Just these take them. apples look like mimics. Just like <laughs> Is Baldor <laughs> taking an investigation check at the apple I, I am not. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not there. Is yeah. anyone? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Hodor would be getting. It would be like, do you want me to bring these on or not? <laughs> like... Yes, That's yes. Fine. We can always just cook them uh, or something. I think any rations are a welcome sort of benefit to us. Okay. I was very excited that he can lift. These apples, like, oh, yeah, apples yeah, fair enough. Yeah. He's with, like, with, oh. with ease and the, the, the strength. And uh, yeah, so there's a scene of you guys um, taking the rations from the uh, from the ship uh, and then I'm assuming lighting it on fire. Is that the plan? Or did, uh... Yeah, I think so. And as you guys sort of watch as the trees burn, as, the, as it sort of um, drifts away from you guys uh, in, into the into the fog as uh, as this goes on. The sea opens up once more for a little while. What are we rolling for? Oh, oh this uh, lighting in a fire. Yep, yeah, perfect. Yeah, as, uh, as the boat goes up, the ironwood trees burning uh, and as this do black and ash. Normally, like, I know trees burn but because they're ironwood. Do they burn as normal? No, this is very, very black smoke when this is happening. Way more than you would get normally. And they're burning, um, but it's it's tougher to get them to go. 
Um, okay. It's yeah, it's an eerie and odd sight as you just see this sort of blackened, billowing smoke going off in the distance as uh, as you guys start to pull away from uh, uh, from that as this is going on. The fog that was around you all and th- uh, fairly thin over the next period of time, um, that fog will seep in more and more as the day will start to pass. The visibility has dropped and you've had to lower the speed of the ship with the amount of what's going on. Uh, a bit more time passes and uh, it, uh, it it seems like this fog is starting to get to the point where it's just hard to see anything through it and figure out what's uh, actually going to be going on. However, uh, slowly but surely over the next little period, something starts to appear out of the out of the fog and it appears to be some sort of an island it appears covered in thick green forestry and there appears to be some sort of a building nestled within the space as the sort of fog has cleared enough for this space to be seen up ahead and yeah, your as your boat is sort of, all your boats are sort of slowly drifting closer to this strange island in the middle of nowhere. Blythe, um, do you have any anything from your Warclan that we can put on the front of the ship to at least show that we have at least some part of War, just For in me, case they could try my uh, shield here, but. Blythe, as, as, as you're even thinking or contemplating it, there is a cold nugget in your stomach, a knot, where you think, this has got nothing to do with the war. This doesn't look like war. Uh, uh, and then it's sort of like, you've just got the sense that this is something, you feel a presence up ahead of, of something that's unsettling you, uh, even as you're looking upon this, as the black smoke starts to appear from one of the chimneys at top. You're very unnerved by this scene. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. And I think what we'll have is, we sort of, as he's sort of saying that, the camera sort of pans back as your little ships move closer to this. And, uh, yeah, we will be reconvening here next time for whatever is going on with this place. Well done, everyone. There we go. We've uh, yeah made it for another week, and we're uh, yeah we're uh, we're back on the seas. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that's where we're going to call it for tonight. And then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll reconvene next time. So well done. <laughs> we right, did it. Ending Good. the stream. <laughs>